Welcome to the dazzling world of artificial intelligence and machine learning. In this thrilling journey, we will unlock the secrets of machines that think, learn and adapt, reshaping our futures in ways we could only dream of. Imagine computers deciphering human language, cars that drive themselves and medical miracles through data-driven diagnosis. It's not science fiction. It's the power of AI ML. Join us in this AI ML full course that will help you to step into this amazing field. In next five hours, we are going to see AI roadmap, how to become an AI engineer and best AI certifications. Machine learning is important to learn AI. So we will help you with the basics of machine learning concepts and algorithms. By the end of this video, we will cover the best implementation of AI, that is chat GPT. Fasten your seat belts because the future is here and it's driven by the incredible forces of AI and ML. On that note, enhance your professional prospects through enrollment in postgraduate program in AI and machine learning from Simply Learn, offered in partnership with both Purdue University and IBM. Acquire sought after competencies encompassing machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, computer vision, reinforcement learning, generative AI, prompt engineering, chat GPT, and myriad of other cutting edge topics. One year of experience is preferred to enroll in this course. Hurry up and enroll now. Find the course link in the description box. So without any further delay, let's begin. So an AI professional is an expert in the field of artificial intelligence, possessing the knowledge and skills to design, develop and implement AI solutions. They play a crucial role in various industries, leveraging AI technologies to solve complex problems and enhance decision making process. They are in high demand due to the increasing use of AI in industries like healthcare, finance and technology. And now we will explore the various career paths for an AI professional. Starting with AI research scientist, then we have machine learning engineer, data scientist, NLP engineer, computer vision engineer, AI ethics and bias analyst, AI product manager, AI software developer. So these are the career paths for an AI professional. Now we will move to the roles and responsibilities for each profession. So starting with AI research scientist. So the roles and responsibilities are conduct research to advance AI and machine learning technologies. Then we have developed and implement novel algorithms and models. And another work is integrate AI into products and services. And then publish research findings in conferences and journals. Then stay updated with the latest developments in AI research. So these are the roles and responsibilities for AI research scientists. Now moving on to the next role that was machine learning engineer. And now we'll see its roles and responsibilities that is design and build machine learning models and systems, collect and pre-process data for model training, tune and optimize algorithms for performance, deploy models into production environments and monitor and maintain machine learning systems. And now moving on to the next role that is data scientist. Data scientist roles and responsibilities are as follows. They analyze large data set to extract meaningful insights. They develop predictive models and data-driven solutions and they create data visualizations and reports for decision making. They collaborate with business teams to identify data-driven opportunities. They also ensure that data privacy and security compliance keep in handy. And now moving on to the next role that is Natural Language Processing Engineer, NLP Engineer. And their roles and responsibilities are they develop NLP models for language understanding and generation. They pre-process and clean text data for NLP tasks. They work on sentiment analysis, chatbots and language translation. They collaborate with linguists and domain experts for specialized NLP projects. They stay current with NLP research and technologies. And now moving on to the next role that is computer vision engineer. So the computer vision engineer build computer vision algorithms for image and video analysis. They develop object detection, image recognition and facial recognition systems. They collaborate with hardware teams for embedded vision applications. They implement image and video processing techniques. They also stay updated on computer vision advancements. So these were the roles and responsibilities for computer vision engineer. Now moving on to the next role 
that is AI ethics and bias analyst. So starting with their roles and responsibilities, the first one is assess and mitigate ethical concerns and biases in AI systems, develop and implement fairness and bias detection algorithms, ensure AI systems that comply with ethical guidelines and regulations. They educate teams on ethical AI practices and they conduct audits and assessments of AI models. Now moving on to the next role that is AI product manager. Now moving on to the next role that is AI product manager. And now we'll see their roles and responsibilities. So they define the AI product strategy and roadmap. They collaborate with stakeholders to gather requirements and they prioritize features and functionalities for AI products. They also manage the development and deployment for AI solutions. They also monitor product performance and gather user feedback. So these are the steps you need to follow to become an AI professional. So the step one is mastering the fundamentals. Then we have introduction to machine learning. Then the third step is delving deeper into deep learning. Then we have practical experience with data. Then introduction to natural language processing. And then we have immersion in computer vision. And then introduction to reinforcement learning. And then engage in practical projects and continuous learning. So starting with the step one. So what should you do to be a AI professional? So the first step is mastering the fundamentals. So begin your AI journey by establishing a strong foundation in core concepts. Get acquired with essential mathematical principles such as algebra, calculus and probability. Additionally, take the time to become proficient in a beginner friendly programming language like Python, which is widely utilized in the field of AI. Explore various online tutorials and education resources to grasp the fundamental aspects of Python programming. Now moving to step 2, that is introduction to machine learning. So machine learning constitutes a pivotal component of AI. Start by comprehending the concepts of supervised and unsupervised learning. Supervised learning involves the training of models using labeled data, while unsupervised learning revolves around the identification of patterns within unlabeled data. Familiarize yourself with popular machine learning algorithms like linear regression and decision trees. Prioritize gaining an intuitive understanding of these algorithms before delving into their mathematical intricacies. And now moving on to the step 3, that is delving deeper into deep learning. Deep learning has witnessed significant acclaim in recent years. Commence your deep learning journey by acquiring knowledge about neural networks, the fundamental building blocks of deep learning. Gain insight into the structure of neural networks, their data learning mechanisms and their predictive capabilities. Explore crucial concepts like activation functions, backpropagation, and gradient descent. So this was about the step 3. Now we'll move to the step 4 that is practical experience with data. So data is the lifeblood of AI applications. Learn how to efficiently manipulate and pre-process data. Discover techniques for data cleaning, addressing missing values, and transforming data into formats suitable for model training. Put your skills into practice by working with libraries like Pandas and NumPy, which simplify data manipulation tasks. Now moving on to the step 5, that is introduction to natural language processing. Natural language processing is focused on enabling machines to comprehend human language. Begin by building a foundation in essential NLP concepts, such as tokenization, the division of text into words or sentences. Stemming, reducing words to their root forms, and part of speech tagging, identifying grammatical elements. Gain practical experience by experimenting with NLP libraries like NLTK. Now moving on to the step 6, that is immersion in computer vision. So computer vision involves the teaching of machines to interpret visual information. Begin by exploring image processing techniques including filtering and feature extraction. Learn about widely used computer vision algorithms such as object detection and image classification. Repeat, put your knowledge into action by experimenting with libraries like OpenCV and TensorFlow to implement computer vision applications. Now moving on to the step 7 that is introduction to reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning centers on training agents to make decisions through a process of trial and error. Start by understanding core concepts such as rewards, states and actions. Familiarize yourself with popular algorithms like Q-learning and engage with environments like OpenAI Gym to practice reinforcement learning. Then we have the step 8, engaging in practical projects and continuous learning. Apply your newfound knowledge through hands-on projects. Begin with small-scale projects and progressively take on more complex challenges. 
participate in AI communities and contribute to online forums to collaborate with fellow learners and gain insights from experienced practitioners. Stay updated with the latest developments in AI by following AI blogs, attending webinars and exploring AI related news sources. So in conclusion, I want to say that commencing your AI journey as a novice may appear daunting, but by following this structured roadmap, you can progress systematically and establish a solid foundation in AI concepts. Remember to prioritize a deep understanding of the fundamentals, engage in hands-on learning with real-world data, and undertake projects to reinforce your knowledge. Embrace continuous learning and leverage online resources and communities to enhance your AI skills. Now moving on to the companies hiring AI professional. So Amazon, Capgemini, Oracle, TCS, Accenture, SAP, IBM, Cognizant. So these are the companies and these are the topmost companies that hire AI professionals. And now moving on to the average salary for AI professionals. So in US, a beginner AI professional can earn up to $82,000 to $128,000. And an experienced professional can earn from $99,000 to $200,000. And if we talk about India, a beginner can earn from 5 lakhs to 12 lakhs per annum. And if we talk about the experienced professional, they can earn from 7 lakhs to 20 lakhs per annum. So these data are just the stats from the glass door. And they can vary on the different states and the countries. So well, there you have it folks. And before ending, I want to take a minute to hear from our learners who have experienced massive success in their careers by opting out the bootcamp and the postgraduate program in AI and machine learning. AI has transformed the way we live, work and interact with technology. From virtual assistants to autonomous vehicles, AI is revolutionizing every industry, promising groundbreaking advancements and unimaginable possibilities. But why should you consider a career in artificial intelligence? AI is not just a passing trend. It's a seismic shift that is reshaping our world and creating new avenues for innovation and discovery. By embracing a career in artificial intelligence, you become a part of a dynamic field that thrives on solving complex problems, pushing boundaries, and making a profound impact on society. The demand for AI professionals is skyrocketing across industries, from healthcare and finance to entertainment and transportation. Organizations are actively seeking talented individuals who can harness the power of artificial intelligence to drive their businesses forward. But what does it take to become an AI engineer? How can you embark on this thrilling journey? Don't worry, we have the answers to all your questions. Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Learn. In this video, we'll take you through the roadmap of how to become an AI engineer. But before we begin, if you enjoy watching these videos and find them interesting, then subscribe to our YouTube channel because we bring the best videos for you daily. Also, press the bell icon to never miss any updates from Simply Learn. Some steps are crucial to master the field of AI and becoming an AI engineer. So let's go through them real quick. First, establish a strong foundation in mathematics and programming. Start by gaining a solid understanding of critical mathematical concepts such as linear algebra, calculus and probability. Additionally, it is crucial to become proficient in a programming language like Python which is commonly used in AI and develop your coding skills. Next, pursue a degree in a relevant field. Earn a bachelor's or master's degree in computer science, data science, AI or a related discipline to acquire a comprehensive understanding of AI principles and techniques. Then, acquire knowledge in machine learning and deep learning. Familiarize yourself with ML algorithms, neural networks and deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch to train and optimize models using real-world datasets. Afterward, engage in practical projects. Gain hands-on experience and demonstrate your skills by working on AI projects. Building a portfolio of projects that showcase your ability to solve AI problems can make a strong impression on potential employers. Collaborate and network. Engage with AI communities. Attend conferences and participate in online forums to connect with professionals in the field. Collaborating with others can enhance your learning experience and open up new opportunities. The next part is seek internships or entry-level positions. Gain practical experience through AI internships or entry-level roles in industry or research institutions. This will provide valuable exposure and help you further develop your skills. Continuously learn and adapt. 
In the fast-paced world of AI, it is crucial to stay updated on new developments, explore specialized areas, and embrace emerging technologies and tools. Continual learning and adaptability are essential for pursuing a successful career as an AI engineer. Now that you are familiar with the steps involved in the journey of an AI engineer, let's have a look at the salary of an AI engineer. According to Glassdoor, the average reported salary of an AI engineer in the United States is around $105,000 per year. However, in India it is around 9,33,000 rupees per annum. These figures are way better than the average salary of any job role. Let's move forward and discuss the essential skills you need to become an AI engineer. These skills include strong programming abilities, knowledge of machine learning algorithms, proficiency in statistics and mathematics, familiarity with deep learning frameworks, and experience with big data technologies. Excellent problem solving and analytical skills are also crucial. As an AI or machine learning engineer, you need to perform certain tasks such as developing, testing, and deploying AI models through programming algorithms like random forest, logistic regression, linear regression, and so on. The responsibility of an AI engineer includes Convert machine learning models into application program interfaces so that other applications can use it. Build AI models from scratch and help the different components of the organization, such as product managers and stakeholders, understand what results they gain from the model. Build data ingestion and data transformation infrastructure. Automate the infrastructure that the data science team uses. Perform statistical analysis and tune the results so that the organization can make better informed decisions. Set up and manage AI development and product infrastructure. Be a good team player as coordinating with others is must. Artificial intelligence AI has emerged as a transformative technology that is revolutioning various aspects of our lives. With its ability to simulate human intelligence and perform complex tasks, AI has found application in the field ranging from healthcare, finance, to transportation and entertainment and many other fields. So let me share you some fascinating stats with you that illustrate the impact of the potential of this game-changing technology before we delve into the fascinating world of artificial intelligence. So according to Glassdoor, the average salary of AI engineers is $160,000 in the United States and in India it's up to 11 lakh per annum in India. So learning AI offers numerous benefits ranging from career opportunities and innovation to personal growth and ethical consideration. It equips you with valuable skills and knowledge that can have profound impact on various aspects of society and the world at large. But before choosing the right course to excel in the field of AI can be challenging. So with so many options available out there in the market, how do you know which one is the right for you? Well, we are here to help you. Without any further ado, let's discuss the top AI certification for 2024. Number one on the list is Postgraduate Program in AI and Machine Learning. This postgraduate program in AI and machine learning in collaboration with Purdue University and IBM offered you by Simply Learn is an online program designed you to provide students with a comprehensive understanding of AI and machine learning concepts, tools, and techniques. These programs cover various topics such as data science, stat, deep learning, computer vision, and NLP, natural language processing, and help you gain the right skills on various tools such as Keras, Matplotlib, TensorFlow, Django, and many more. Furthermore, the curriculum is structured around interactive online class, live session with industry expert, and hands-on projects. The program also includes access to Simply Learn's learning management system, which provides students with additional resources such as practice, exercise, quizzes, and simulation. Overall, the Purdue postgraduate program in AI and machine learning offered by Simply Learn is a well-structured and comprehensive program that can help a student gain expertise in AI and machine learning concepts and enhance their career prospect in the field. Upon completing the program, a student will receive a postgraduate certificate from Purdue University and IBM, indicating that they have acquired the skills and knowledge necessary to apply AI and machine learning concepts in the real-world situation. Admission to this postgraduate program in AI ML course requires two plus years of experience preferred, bachelor degree with an average of 50% or higher marks, basic understanding of programming concept and mathematics. So hurry up, enroll now in the Purdue Postgraduate Program in AIML and create your own successful career. The course link is in the description box below. 
Number two. Number two on the list is IIT Kanpur Professional Certificate Course in AI and Machine Learning. Accelerate your career in AI and ML with a comprehensive professional certificate course in AI and Machine Learning in collaboration with IIT Kanpur. This machine learning course will equip with highly coveted skill in ML, Deep Learning, NLP, Generative AI, Prompt Engineering, Chat GPT, and much more. Through live classes by industry expert, master classes from IIT Kanpur faculty, and hands-on projects, you will stay ahead in the field of AI. This AI ML course covers concepts like machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, reinforcement learning, computer vision, speech recognition, generative AI, explainable AI, prompt engineering, chat GPT, and much more. This state of art of machine learning course covers modules that can help you kickstart a thriving career in AI ML. You will also receive the opportunity to delve into cutting edge AI topics such as generative AI, chat GPT, GPT models, and explainable AI. For admission to this artificial intelligence course, candidates should have a bachelor degree with an average of 50% or higher marks, preferably two plus years of experience, prior knowledge or experience in programming and mathematics. So why wait and roll now and unlock exciting AI ML opportunities? So why wait? Join now, seats are filling fast. The course link is in the description box below. Number third on the list is AI ML Bootcamp by Caltech. This AI ML Bootcamp program may develop your career as an expert in artificial intelligence and machine learning bootcamp in the collaboration with Caltech University. The AI ML Bootcamp offers master classes by Caltech professors, live classes taught by industry experts, interactive labs, and projects relevant to this industry. This bootcamp offers Caltech academic excellence, simply learns career assistance, campus immersion, and hands on experience. This AI ML Bootcamp will help you get noticed by top hiring companies and helps you in the industry relevant capstone project. The AI ML Bootcamp at Caltech is the best option for anyone wishing to get a competitive edge in the era of cutting edge technologies. This bootcamp offers complete understanding of AI based technologies like machine learning, natural language processing, deep learning, speech recognition, reinforcement learning, and much more. This course covers tools and techniques like Python, TensorFlow, Keras, Matplotlib, and many more, along with industry projects like social media, e commerce manufacturing, ad tech, healthcare, and many more amazing projects. Choosing the bootcamp can get you hired by the renowned companies like Microsoft, Google, IBM, Amazon, Samsung, and Adobe. This bootcamp has benefited many aspiring AI ML engineers and professionals. Candidates applying for AI ML bootcamp should have the following. This bootcamp is for the United States only. Be at least 18 years old and have a high school diploma or equivalent. Have prior knowledge or experience in programming and mathematics, preferably two plus years of formal work experience. So hurry up and enroll now in the AI and ML bootcamp and create your own successful career. The course link is in the description box below. Finally, we have Masters in Artificial Intelligence program. This master program in artificial intelligence is one of the most sought after courses offered by Simply Learn. This artificial intelligence master program in collaboration with IBM introduces students to blended learning and prepares them to be specialists in AI and data science. This program will teach you the necessary skills you need to become an AI expert and land in your dream job. This course covers the basic fundamentals of Python programming languages and its popular libraries like NumPy and Pandas from scratch to some advanced topic like machine learning algorithm, deep learning, natural language processing, computer vision, and AI deployment by covering some important tools like Keras, TensorFlow, SciPy, and many more. So what else you can expect from this program? Well, this course also includes three capstone and 12 industry relevant projects from the likes of Amazon, Walmart, Mercedes-Benz, Uber, and many more. Immersive learning experience, ATEX, higher in life interaction, the live AI online classes delivered by seasoned trainers and industry experts and simply learn job assist programs sound interesting, right? So what are you waiting for? Don't miss out on this chance to take career to the next level. Enroll in our artificial intelligence master program course today and start your journey to become AI expert. The link is added in the description box below and the comment section. Moving forward, let's see the future of AI. The future of AI holds tremendous promising and potential. As technology advances, AI is expected to become more sophisticated and capable. Some key trends that will shape the future of AI include ethical AI, emphasis on fair, transparent, and unbiased AI system grows with efforts of address privacy, accountability, and biases. Ethical concerns drive regulation and responsible AI development. 
AI in robotics. Integrating with AI robotics create intelligent robots for complex tasks in manufacturing, logistics, and healthcare. AI in IoT. AI combined with IoT enables smart home, cities, and industries, enhancing decision making and automation through interconnected devices. AI in personalization. AI enhances personalized experience in entertainment, e commerce, and marketing by understanding user preferences and delivering tailored recommendations. The fifth one is autonomous system. Self driving cars, drones, and robotics advance relying on AI algorithms and sensor transforming transportation, logistics, and other industries. Rather than replacing humans, AI is expected to augment human capabilities and enable more effective collaboration. AI system can assist in decision making, automate repetitive tasks, and provide personalized recommendations, allowing humans to focus on higher level tasks that require creativity and critical thinking. Now let's look into the types of machine learning. Machine learning is primarily of three types. First one is supervised machine learning. As the name suggests, you have to supervise your machine learning while you train it to work on its own. It requires labeled training data. Next up is unsupervised learning wherein there will be training data but it won't be labeled. Finally, there is reinforcement learning wherein the system learns on its own. Let's talk about all these types in detail. Let's try to understand how supervised learning works. Look at the pictures very very carefully. The monitor depicts the model or the system that we are going to train. This is how the training is done. We provide a data set that contains pictures of a kind of a fruit, say an apple. Then we provide another data set which lets the model know that these pictures were that of a fruit called apple. This ends the training phase. Now what we will do is we provide a new set of data which only contains pictures of apple. Now here comes the fun part. The system can actually tell you what fruit it is. And it will remember this and apply this knowledge in future as well. That's how supervised learning works. You are training the model to do a certain kind of an operation on its own. This kind of a model is generally used into filtering spam mails from your email accounts as well. Yes, surprise, aren't you? So let's move on to unsupervised learning now. Let's say we have a data set which is cluttered. In this case, we have a collection of pictures of different fruits. We feed this data to the model and the model analyzes the data to figure out patterns in it. In the end, it categorizes the photos into three types as you can see in the image based on their similarities. So you provide the data to the system and let the system do the rest of the work. Simple, isn't it? This kind of a model is used by Flipkart to figure out the products that are well suited for you. Honestly speaking, this is my favorite type of machine learning out of all the three. And this type has been widely shown in most of the sci-fi movies lately. Let's find out how it works. Imagine a newborn baby. You put a burning candle in front of the baby. The baby does not know that if it touches the flame, its fingers might get burned. So it does that anyway and gets hurt. The next time you put that candle in front of the baby, it will remember what happened the last time and would not repeat what it did. That's exactly how reinforcement learning works. We provide the machine with a data set wherein we ask it to identify a particular kind of a fruit, in this case an apple. So what it does as a response, it tells us that it's a mango. But as we all know, it's a completely wrong answer. So as a feedback, we tell the system that it's wrong, it's not a mango, it's an apple. What it does, it learns from the feedback and keeps that in mind. When the next time, when we ask a same question, it gives us the right answer. It is able to tell us that it's actually an apple. That is a reinforced response. So that's how reinforcement learning works. It learns from its mistakes and experiences. This model is used in games like Prince of Persia or Assassin's Creed or FIFA, wherein the level of difficulty increases as you get better with the games. Just to make it more clear for you, Let's look at a comparison between supervised and unsupervised learning. Firstly, the data involved in case of supervised learning is labeled. As we mentioned in the examples previously, we provide the system with a photo of an apple and let the system know that this is actually an apple. That is called labeled data. So the system learns from the labeled data and makes future predictions. Now, unsupervised learning does not require any kind of labeled data because its work is to look for patterns in the input data and organize it. The next point is that you get a feedback in case of supervised learning. That is, 
Once you get the output, the system tends to remember that and uses it for the next operation. That does not happen for unsupervised learning. And the last point is that supervised learning is mostly used to predict data, whereas unsupervised learning is used to find out hidden patterns or structures in data. I think this would have made a lot of things clear for you regarding supervised and unsupervised learning. Machine learning is the art of making computers learn and act like humans by feeding data and which focuses on utilization of information and imitating the way that people learn step by step working on its accuracy. Machine learning is playing a major role in our day-to-day -day life. Machine learning is used in trends and pattern identification, automation, weather forecasting and many more. Machine learning is classified into supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, reinforcement learning, semi-supervised learning. Let's understand supervised machine learning in detail. Supervised machine learning, machines are trained using label data, also known as training data, to predict the results. Here, label data refers to a group of data that have been tagged with one or more names, and data is already known to the machine. In the real world, supervised machine learning can be used for image and object recognition, predictive analytics, customer sentiment analysis, spam detection, and many more. After understanding what supervised machine learning is, let's move forward and see how supervised machine learning works. Suppose we have a dataset that includes dogs and cats. Now the first step is that we need to train the model for each dogs and cats as per the factors like similarity, pattern, shapes, and contrast. Now after training, we test our model using new dataset which is unknown to the model and the task of the model is to identify the new input data. The machine is already trained on all types of similarity, pattern, shapes, and contrast. When it finds new data, it classifies it on the basis of similarity, patterns, shapes, and contrasts, and predict the output. As of now, we are well aware of how supervised machine learning works. Let's have a walkthrough of the advantages and disadvantages of supervised machine learning. Before diving deep into any technology, it is very important to understand its advantages and disadvantages. Here are some advantages of supervised machine learning. First one is real world computation problems. Help you to solve various types of real world computation problems like spam detection, image and object recognition, and many more. The second one is optimization. Using past experience, supervised machine learning can optimize performance criteria. The third one is prediction. In supervised machine learning, models can predict the output based on the past experience as well. The fourth one is reusable data. We can reuse the training data unless there is any feature change. Supervised machine learning has advantages as well as disadvantages. Let's have a look at some disadvantages now. Computation time is also known as running time. It's very vast for the supervised machine learning. Supervised machine learning models always need updates. Reprocessing of data a big challenge for predicting the output. Anyone can overlay supervised machine learning easily. It occurs when a statical model is exactly against its training data. Now that we have an understanding of advantages and disadvantages, let's move forward and discuss different types of supervised machine learning. Supervised machine learning can be further classified into two problems which are classification, regression. Let's see them one by one in detail. Classification is a process of in which new observations are recognized and separated in such a way that they can be categorized. Assuming you have a group of things, for example, vegetables, you can categorize them based on their property that they have. Like, you can arrange the potatoes in class A, tomatoes in class B, capsicum in class C. These are some popular classification algorithms that come under supervised machine learning. First one is random forest. Second, decision trees. Third one is logistic regression. Fourth one is support vector machines. Moving forward, let's have a look on regression. A regression algorithm is used to figure out the connection between a dependent and independent variable. Dependent variables are nothing but a variables which we are trying to predict or forecast. An independent variables means that factors that influence the analysis. 
it is usually used to make projection. For example, we have variable 1 as humidity and variable 2 as temperature, where humidity will play the role of dependent variable and temperature will be the independent variable. Humidity and temperatures are correlated in such a way that as temperature increases, humidity will decrease and vice versa. Many organizations utilize regression models to predict how stocks will act from here on. This is done by breaking down the past information on a stock cost and trends to recognize pattern. These are some popular regression algorithms that comes under supervised machine learning. First one is linear regression. Second one is regression trees. Third one is non-linear regression. Fourth one is Bayesian linear regression. After discussing the advantages and disadvantages of supervised machine learning and its types, let's move forward to see algorithms in supervised machine learning. In computer programming terms, an algorithm is a set of well-defined instructions to solve a particular problem. It takes a bunch of information sources and delivers the ideal result. The first supervised machine learning algorithm is linear regression. Linear regression is utilized to recognize the connection between dependent variable and at least one independent variable and is commonly utilized to make forecasts about future results. Companies frequently use linear regression models to predict future sales. This can be useful for things like planning and arranging. Algorithms like Amazon product-to-product -product collaborative filtering are utilized to predict what clients will purchase later on given their past purchase history. A regression tree is worked through a cycle known as binary recursive partitioning, which is an iterative interaction that divides the information into segments or branches and afterward keep splitting each data into smaller groups as the technique climbs each branch. These trees are used for dependent variables with continuous value. For example, a regression tree named food, which divides into segments wedge and non wedge. Further, it keeps splitting into smaller groups. Nonlinear regression is a type of regression examination wherein information is fit to a model and afterward communicated as a numerical function. Simple linear regression relates two factors with a straight line, while nonlinear regression relates the two factors in a nonlinear relationship. Nonlinear regression can be used to predict population growth over time or the relationship between GDP and the time of a country. This algorithm is a way to deal with linear regression in which the statical examination is attempted inside the settings of Bayesian inference. Linear regression and Bayesian regression can generate the same prediction and with the help of Bayesian processing, we can retrieve the complete variety of inferential solution instead of point estimate. Random forest is one of the most adaptable supervised machine learning algorithm utilized for both classification and regression purposes. Random Forest is involved at work by researchers in numerous ventures including banking, stock exchanging, mitigation. It is utilized to predict the things which assist these businesses with running productively like client activity, patient history and safety. A decision tree is a very specific sort of tree that empowers you to conclude some kind of process used for dependent variables with discrete values. For example, we want to pick between manufacturing product A or product B or putting resources into decision 1, decision 2 or decision 3. Decision trees are an outstanding method for managing these kinds of complex choices. Logistics regression is calculated logically and chosen when the dependent variable is categorized, meaning they have double results. For example, logistics regression can be used to predict whether a political nominee will win or lose a political race or regardless of whether a secondary school student will be admitted up to a specific school. A support vector machine is a well-known supervised machine learning model. It is utilized for the two information, classification and regression. All things considered, it is regularly utilized for grouping issues, like we can involve in different life care systems, we can involve in typically happy and sad look arrangement, we can involve in filters if we make specific loops, it would add the particular filter according to the expression. The scope of articulation lies between happy and sad. After understanding supervised machine learning algorithms, let's move forward and cover applications of supervised machine learning. 
Choose from over 300 in-demand skills and get access to 1,000 plus hours of video content for free. Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Supervised machine learning models can be used to build and advance several businesses' applications, including the following. The first one is image and object recognition. Supervised machine learning models can be utilized to find, isolate, and assort objects out of recordings or pictures, making them valuable when applied to different computer vision strategies and imagery analysis. The second one is predictive analysis. A broad use case for supervised machine learning models is in making predictive analytics systems to give profound experience into different business data of interest. This permits to expect specific outcomes because of a given result variable, assisting business leaders to justify choices or turn to serve the association. The third one is customer sentiment analysis. Utilizing supervised machine learning models, association can extract and arrange significant pieces of data from huge volumes of information, including context, emotion, and purpose with very little human intervention. This can be incredibly valuable while acquiring a superior understanding of client collaboration and can be utilized to further develop brand engagement efforts. The fourth one is spam detection. Spam identification is another application of supervised machine learning model. Utilizing classification calculation, companies can prepare datasets to recognize patterns or anomalies in new information to sort out spam and non-spam related data. Unsupervised learning is a machine learning technique used to train the machine learning algorithm using data that is either unclassified or unlabeled and allows the algorithm to act on that data without guidance. Unlabeled data is a designation for pieces of data that have not been tagged with labels identified by characteristics, properties, or classifications. So the flow of unsupervised learning starts with training data that has no labels and depends on the feature vector. The machine learning model defines the predictive model. This is tested with an individual subset of data with its own feature vector. Here, the predictive model defines the likelihood or cluster ID or a better representation of unlabeled data. Let's look at the difference between unsupervised and supervised learning. Supervised learning technique deals with labeled data where the output data patterns are known to the system. Unsupervised learning works with unlabeled data in which the output is just based on the collection of perceptions. Supervised learning method is less complex. The unsupervised learning method is more complex. Supervised learning conducts offline analysis. Unsupervised learning performs real-time analysis the outcome of the supervised learning technique is comparatively more accurate and reliable. Unsupervised learning generates moderately acute but reliable results, while classification and regression are the types of problems solved under the supervised learning method. Unsupervised learning includes clustering and associative rule mining problems, example, and application of unsupervised learning. Let's understand unsupervised learning through an example. Consider a scenario where a child had no learning phase and is shown images without the labels. Now if the child is asked to identify if any range is a bird or an animal, he will lack the information that can help him do so. The best he can do is come up with the following groups based on common patterns, wings and legs for example. This explains how unsupervised learning works. We show a lot of data to our algorithm and ask it to find patterns in the data by itself. Let's look at the application of unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning can be used for anomaly detection as well as clustering. To understand clustering, let's look at a simple real-life example. A mother asks her two children to arrange the pieces of playing blocks. The children come up with two different groups as shown with different similarities in the blocks. This is clustering. Each of our children came up with a different type of grouping. One child grouped them based on the shape, whereas the other grouped them based on the color. There is no right or wrong way. Then, how can you pick one set of clusters over the others? This will depend on the similarity measure used by the mother in this case. 
The arrangement of child 1 is better than child 2 if the similarity measure chosen by the mother was that blocks should have the same shape. However, the arrangement by child 2 is better if the similarity measure chosen by the mother was that blocks should have the same color. Therefore, defining the similarity measure is important when performing clustering. There may be different ways in which data can be arranged in different groups based on size, shape, color, texture, and other complex features. Anomaly detection is a clustering technique used to identify unusual patterns that do not conform to expected behavior. Anomaly detection has many applications in business, such as intrusion detection, system health monitoring, and fraud detection. Clustering The method of grouping similar entities together is called clustering. The goal of this unsupervised machine learning method is to seek out similarities within the data points and to cluster similar data points together. Need for clustering Let's look at the need for clustering. Grouping similar entities together helps to merge the attributes of different clusters. In other words, this gives us insight into underlying patterns of different groups. There are a lot of applications of grouping unlabeled data. For example, in order to maximize the revenue, you can identify different groups or clusters of customers and market to each group in a different way. Another example is grouping books together that belong to similar topics. Clustering is needed to determine the intrinsic grouping in a set of unlabeled data, organize data into clusters that show internal structure of the data, partition the data points, understand and extract value from large sets of structured and unstructured data. Types of clustering. There are two types of clustering, hierarchical clustering and partitional clustering. Hierarchical clustering can be agglomerative and divisive, whereas partitional clustering can be k-means and fuzzy c-means. A distinction among different types of clustering is whether the set of clusters is nested or unnested. A partitional clustering is just a division of the set of data objects into non-overlapping sets or clusters such that every data object is in just one subset. A hierarchical clustering is a tree structure that has a set of nested clusters. Hierarchical clustering The output of hierarchical clustering is a hierarchy. How does the hierarchical clustering form a hierarchy? Assume you are going to create a three-layer hierarchy from six different data nodes. So first combine A and B based on similarity and also combine D and E based on similarity. Combination of A and B is combined with C. In the similar way, combination of D and E is combined with F. Now combine C and F inside one cluster. When you look at the final tree, it contains all clusters combined into a single cluster. Let's understand the working of hierarchical clustering. It works in four steps. Step 1. Assign each item to its own cluster, such that if you have n number of items, you will have n number of clusters. Step 2. Merge two clusters into a single cluster by finding the closest pair of clusters. Now you will have one cluster less. Step 3. Compute distances between the new cluster and all old clusters. Step 4. Repeat steps 2 and 3 until all items are clustered into a single cluster of size n. Let's understand the distance measure in hierarchical clustering. Let's look at the different kinds of linkage in clustering. Complete linkage clustering. It finds the maximum distance between points belonging to two different clusters. Single linkage clustering. It finds the minimum possible distance between points belonging to two different clusters. Mean linkage clustering. It finds all possible pairwise distances for points belonging to two different clusters and then calculates the average. Centroid linkage clustering. It finds the centroid of each cluster and calculates the distance between them. What is dendrogram? It is a tree diagram frequently used to illustrate the arrangement of the clusters produced by hierarchical clustering. It shows the hierarchical relationship between objects. It is most commonly created as an output of hierarchical clustering. The main use of a dendrogram is to work out the best way to allocate objects to clusters. 
The dendrogram also shows the hierarchical clustering of five observations and the relationship between each of them. Hierarchical clustering example. Let's understand hierarchical clustering through an example. In the given example, hierarchical clustering is used to find the distances between the different cities in kilometers. The following matrix traces a hierarchical clustering of distances in miles between different cities. The method of clustering is single link. Here, as you can see from the given distance matrix, the nearest pair of objects is TO and MI. MI and TO are merged into a single cluster called MITO. As MI column has lower values than TO column, MITO consists of MI column values. MITO column has one index with zero value. This is because there is no distance between cluster MITO and MITO. To get a new distance matrix, we compute the distance from this new cluster to all other clusters. Now the nearest pair of objects is NA and RM. These are combined into a single cluster called NARM. To get a new distance matrix, we compute the distance from this new cluster to all other clusters. In the similar way, the nearest pair of objects is BA and NARM. These are combined into a single cluster called BA, NARM. To get a new distance matrix, we compute the distance from the new cluster to all other clusters. Similarly, now the nearest pair of objects is BA, NARM, and FI. These combined into a single cluster called BA, NARM, FI. To get a new distance matrix, we compute the distance from this new cluster to all other clusters. Finally, we merge the last two clusters. This process is summarized by the clustering diagram on the right and the final distance matrix on the left. On that note, enhance your professional prospects through enrollment in postgraduate program in AI and machine learning from Simply Learn, offered in partnership with both Purdue University and IBM. Acquire sought-after competencies encompassing machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, computer vision, reinforcement learning, generative AI, prompt engineering, chat GPT, and myriad of other cutting-edge topics. One year of experience is preferred to enroll in this course. Hurry up and enroll now. Find the course link in the description box. Why reinforcement learning? Training a machine learning model requires a lot of data, which might not always be available to us. Further, the data provided might not be reliable. Learning from a small subset of actions will not help expand the vast realm of solutions that may work for a particular problem. You can see here we have the robot learning to walk. Um, very complicated setup when you're learning how to walk and you'll start asking questions like if I'm taking one step forward and left, well, what happens if I pick up a 50 pound object? How does that change how a robot would walk? These things are very difficult to program because there's no actual information on it until the, it's actually tried out. Learning from a small subset of actions will not help expand the vast realm of solutions that may work for a particular problem. And we'll see here it learned how to walk. This is going to slow the growth that technology is capable of. Machines need to learn to perform actions by themselves and not just learn off humans. And you see the objective climb a mountain. A real interesting point here is that as human beings we can go into a very unknown environment and we can adjust for it and kind of explore and play with it. Most of the models, the non-reinforcement models in computer uh, machine learning, aren't able to do that very well. Uh, there's a couple of them that can be used or integrated to see how it goes is what we're talking about with reinforcement learning. So what is reinforcement learning? Reinforcement learning is a sub-branch of machine learning that trains a model to return an optimum solution for a problem by taking a sequence of decisions by itself. Consider a robot learning to go from one place to another. The robot is given a scenario and must arrive at a solution by itself. The robot can take different paths to reach the destination. It will know the best path by the time taken on each path. It might even come up with a unique solution all by itself. And that's really important is we're looking for unique solutions. Uh, we want the best solution, but you can't find it unless you try it. So we're looking at uh, our different 
systems or different model. We have supervised versus unsupervised versus reinforcement learning. And with the supervised learning, that is probably the most controlled environment. Uh, we have a lot of different supervised learning models, whether it's linear regression, neural networks, um, there's all kinds of things in between, decision trees. The data provided is labeled data with output values specified. And this is important because when we talk about supervised learning, you already know the answer for all this information. You already know the picture has a motorcycle in it, so you're supervised learning. You already know that um, the outcome for tomorrow, for you know, going back a week, you're looking at stock, you can already have like the graph of what the next day looks like, so you have an answer for it. And you have labeled data which is used, you have an external supervision, and solves problems by mapping labeled input to known output. So very controlled. Unsupervised learning, and unsupervised learning is really interesting because it's now taking part in many other models. They start with, an, you can actually insert an unsupervised learning model um, in almost either supervised or reinforcement learning as part of the system, which is really cool. Uh, data provided is unlabeled data. The outputs are not specified. Machine makes its own predictions. Used to solve association with clustering problems. Unlabeled data is used. No supervision. Solves problems by understanding patterns and discovering output. Uh, so you can look at this and you can think um, some of these things go with each other. They belong together. So it's looking for what connects in different ways. And there's a lot of different algorithms that look at this. Um, when you start getting into those, there's some really cool images that come up of what unsupervised learning is, how it can pick out, say, uh, the area of a donut. One model will see the area of the donut, and the other one will divide it into three sections based on its location versus what's next to it. So there's a lot of stuff that goes in with unsupervised learning. And then we're looking at reinforcement learning, probably the biggest industry in today's market uh, in machine learning or growing market. It's very, in its very infant stage uh, as far as how it works and what it's going to be capable of. The machine learns from its environment using rewards and errors. Used to solve reward-based problems, no predefined data is used, no supervision, follows trail and error problem solving approach. Uh, so again, we have a random, we, at first you start with a random, I try this, it works, and this is my reward, doesn't work very well maybe, or maybe it doesn't even get you where you're trying to get it to do, and then you get your reward back, and then it looks at that and says, well, let's try something else, and it starts to play with these different things, finding the best route. So let's take a look at important terms in today's reinforcement model. And this has become pretty standardized over the last uh, few years, so these are really good to know. We have the agent. Uh, agent is the model that is being trained via reinforcement learning. So this is your actual uh, entity that has, however you're doing it, whether you're using a neural network or a, a Q table or whatever, combination thereof. This is the actual agent that you're using. This is the model. And you have your environment. Uh, the training situation that the model must op optimize to is called its environment. Uh, and you can see here, I guess we have a robot who's trying to get a uh, chest full of gems or whatever, and that's the output. And then you have your action. This is all possible steps that can be taken by the model, and it picks one action. And you can see here that it's picked three different uh, routes to get to the chest of uh, diamonds and gems. We have a state, the current position condition returned by the model. And you could look at this uh, if you're playing like a video game, this is the screen you're looking at. Uh, so when you go back here, uh, the environment is a whole game board. So if you're playing one of those Mobius games, you might have the whole game board going on, uh, but then you have your current position. Where are you on that game board? What's around that? What's around you? Um, if you were talking about a robot, the environment might be moving around the yard, where it is in the yard and what it can see, what input it has in that location, that would be the current position condition returned by the model. And then the reward. Uh, to help the model move in the right direction, it is rewarded. Points are given to it to appraise some kind of action. So, yeah, you did good, or if, uh, didn't do as good, trying to maximize the reward and have the best reward possible. And then policy. Policy determines how an agent will behave at any time. It acts as a mapping between action and present state. This is part of the model. What, what, what is your action that you're, you're going to take? What's the policy you're using to have an output from your agent? 
one of the reasons they separate uh, policy as its own entity is that you usually have a prediction um, of a different options and then the policy well how am I going to pick the best based on those predictions I'm going to guess at different options and we'll actually weigh those options in and find the best option we think will work uh, so it's a little tricky but the policy thing is actually pretty cool how it works let's go ahead and take a look at a reinforcement learning example and just in looking at this we're going to take a look uh, consider what a dog um, that we want to train uh, so the dog would be like the agent so you have your your puppy or whatever uh, and then your environment is going to be the whole house or whatever it is where you're training them and then you have an action we want to teach the dog to fetch so action equals fetching uh, and then we have a little biscuit so we can get the dog to perform various actions by offering incentives such as a dog biscuit as a reward. The dog will follow a policy to maximize this reward and hence will follow every command and might even learn new actions like begging by itself. Uh, so, you have you know, so we start off with fetching, it goes, oh, I get a biscuit for that. It tries something else and you get a handshake or begging or something like that. And it goes, oh, this is also reward based. And so it kind of explores things to find out what will bring it as biscuit. And that's very much like how a reinforced model goes is it uh, looks for different rewards. How do I find, can I try different things and find a reward that works? The dog also will want to run around and play and explore its environment. Uh, this quality of model is called exploration. So there's a little randomness going on in exploration. It explores new parts of the house. Climbing on the sofa doesn't get a reward. In fact, it usually gets kicked off the sofa. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about Markov's decision process. Uh, Markov's decision process is a reinforcement learning policy used to map a current state to an action where the agent continuously interacts with the environment to produce new solutions and receive rewards. And you'll see here's all of our different uh, uh, vocabulary we just went over. We have a reward, our state, our agent, our environment, and our action. And so even though the environment kind of contains everything, um, that you, you really when you're actually writing the program, your environment's going to put out a reward in state that goes into the agent. Uh, the agent then looks at this uh, state, or it looks at the reward usually um, first, and it says, okay, I got rewarded for whatever I just did, or I didn't get rewarded. And then it looks at the state, <clears throat> and then it comes back, and if you remember from policy, the policy comes in, um, and then we have a reward. The policy is that part that's connected at the bottom. And so it looks at that policy and it says, hey, what's a good action that will probably be similar to what I did or um, uh, sometimes they're completely random, but what's a good action that's going to bring me a different reward? So taking the time to just understand these different pieces as they go is pretty important in most of the models today. Um, and so a lot of them actually have templates based on this that you can pull in and start using. Um, pretty straightforward as far as once you start seeing how it works uh, you can see your environment sends it says hey this is what the agent did this if you're a character in a game this happened and it shoots out a reward in a state the agent looks at the reward looks at the new state and then takes a little guess and says I'm gonna try this action and then that action goes back into the environment it affects the environment the environment then changes depending on what the action was and then it has a new state and a new reward that goes back to the agent. So in the diagram shown, we need to find the shortest path between node A and D. Each path has a reward associated with it, and the path with a maximum reward is what we want to choose. The nodes A, B, C, D denote the nodes to travel from node uh, A to B is an action. Reward is the cost of each path, and policy is each path taken. And you can see here, A can go uh, to B, or A can go to C right off the bat, or it can go right to D. And if you explored all three of these, uh, you would find that A going to D was a zero reward. Um, a going to C and D would generate a different reward. Or you could go A, C, B, D. There's a lot of options here. Um, and so when we start looking at this diagram, you start to realize that even though uh, today's reinforced learning models do really good at uh, uh, finding an answer, they end up trying almost all the different directions you see. 
and so they take up a lot of work uh, or a lot of processing time for reinforcement learning. They're right now in their infant stage and they're really good at solving simple problems. And we'll take a look at one of those in just a minute in a tic-tac-toe game. Uh, but you can see here, uh, once it's gone through these and it's explored, it's going to find the A, C, D is the best reward. It gets a full 30 points for it. In computer programming, an algorithm is a set of well-defined instructions to solve a particular problem. It takes a bunch of information sources and delivers the ideal result. Most of us must be using a Snapchat to apply filters on your faces while making videos or capturing photographs. But do you know how does Snapchat recognize your face while capturing videos or photographs and put filters on it? Even if there are multiple faces, it applies filter on every face accurately. This became possible with the help of face recognition technique, which uses machine learning algorithms to detect faces and apply required filters on them. So this is the basic idea of how an algorithm works. Let's move ahead in this video and we will now discuss how an algorithm works in machine learning. But before that, let's go through what is machine learning. Machine learning is a subpart of artificial intelligence. The art of making computers learn and act like humans by feeding data and make predictions based on experience. As we saw in previous example, when the data that is how far is the nearest fuel station comes in, the machine or in our case Siri immediately start analyzing data and machine accurately makes prediction and decision based on given data. Now that we have an understanding of what machine learning is, let's move forward and discuss different types of machine learning. Machine learning is classified into supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning. There are two sort of problems in supervised learning, classification and regression. Certain types of machine learning algorithms fall under the classifications are decision algorithm, KNN algorithm, logistic algorithms, naive Bayes algorithm, support vector machine algorithm, SVM. However, in regression types of machine learning algorithms are linear regression, regression trees, nonlinear regression, and Bayesian linear regression. Now talking about unsupervised learning, there are two sorts of problems in unsupervised learning, clustering and association. Algorithms that fall under clustering problems include k-means clustering algorithms, principal component analysis algorithms. However, algorithms that fall under association problem are a priori algorithms, FP growth algorithms. In reinforcement learning, there are two types, positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement. Reinforcement learning algorithms are mainly used in AI applications and gaming applications. There are certain types of problems which falls under reinforcement learning are Q learning, state action reward, state action, SARSA algorithms, deep Q neural network, and Markov decision process. After discussing what machine learning is and its type, let's move forward to see how algorithms work in machine learning. Everyone knows the algorithm is a step-by-step -step process to approach a particular problem. There are numerous examples of algorithm from figuring out sets of number to finding routes through maps to showing data on a screen. Let's understand this by using an example. Every algorithm is built on inputs and outputs. Google search algorithm is no different. The input is the search field and the output is the page of result that appears when you enter a particular phrase or keyword also known as SERP or search engine result page. Google has a search algorithm so it can sort results from various websites and provides the user the best result. When you start a search, you will see the search box. will attempt to guess what you are looking for. In order to better understand what the user is looking for, the algorithm is trying to gather as many as suggestions from them as possible. The results from the search field that best matches the query will be ranked. The choose fifth website will rank and in what position using more than 200 ranking variables. Now let's take an example of coding program and see how the algorithm works. Here we will use a case of computer program wherein we want to print the multiplication table of any number. Let's take two. The algorithm start here and then it assign a value to a variable. The variable i is having an initial value of 1. 
the system will read the number the number in case is 2 now the system has a condition a condition can now either be true or false if the value of i reaches 11 then the loop will end otherwise value of i will multiply by the number the initial value of i is 1 so for the first time the system output will be 2 now value of i will be increased by 1 according to the loop condition the system will then move back and check for the condition again the new value of i is 2 which is still less than 11 the system will again print 2 into i which is 2 into 2 on the screen the new output result will be 4 the system will keep following the same procedure repeatedly until the value of i becomes 11 once the value of i becomes 11 then only the algorithm will terminate after discussing how an algorithm works let's move forward and see some popular machine learning algorithms some popular machine learning algorithms are first one is linear regression algorithm second one is logistic regression algorithm and the third one is decision tree and the fourth one is support vector machine algorithm svm and the fifth one is knn k nearest neighbor algorithm and the sixth one is k means clustering algorithms and the, and the seventh one is random forest algorithms and the last but not the least algorithm is a priori algorithms let's go through them in detail one by one Linear regression is one of the most famous and straightforward machine learning algorithms utilized for predictive analysis. Linear regression shows the linear connection between the dependent and the independent factors. The equation of line is y equals to mx plus b. Here, y stands for the response variable or a dependent variable, whereas x is for the predator variable or an independent variable. It attempts best to fit line between the dependent and the independent variable and this best fit line is known as line of regression or regression line let's take a real application example in predicting consumer behavior businesses use linear regression to forecast things like how much a client is likely to spend things like targeted marketing and product development may benefit from this walmart for instance use linear regression to forecast which good would be in high demand across the nation. Moving forward, let's see types of linear regression. There are two types of linear regression algorithm. The first one is simple linear regression and the second one is multiple linear regression. In simple linear regression, if an independent variable is utilized to forecast the worth of a mathematical dependent variable, then at that point, such a linear regression algorithm is called simple linear regression. The equation of line will be y equals to a0 plus a1x. And the second one is multiple linear regression. If the dependent variable declines on the y and the independent variable on the x, then such a relationship is known as negative linear relationship. The line of equation will be minus of a0 plus a1x. Moving forward, let's see logistic linear regression. Logistic regression is the supervised machine learning algorithm utilized to anticipate all the categorical factors or discrete values. It could be very well used for the grouping issues in machine learning. And the result of the logistic regression can be either yes or no, zero or one, man or woman, and so on. It gives the values which lies between zero and one. For example, a credit card business is interested in knowing whether the transaction amount and the credit scope have an impact on the probability that a particular transaction would be fraudulent. The business can use logistic regression to determine how these two predator values can relate the probability that a transaction is fraudulent. The response variable in the model has two possible outcomes. First one is the transaction is fraudulent. And the second one is the transaction is not fraudulent. In logistic regression, rather than fitting a regression line, we fit an S form logistic capability, which predicts two greatest values, 0 or 1. The logistic regression equation can be calculated from linear regression equation. The steps to get logistic regression equations are the equation of a straight line can be written as 
y equals to b0 plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2 till bn xn. In logistic regression, y can be between 0 and 1 only. So for that, let's divide the above equation by 1 minus y. Then the equation will be y upon 1 minus y that is 0 for y0 and infinity for y equals to 1. But range between minus infinity to plus infinity, then we have to take the logarithm of equation and now it will become log of y upon 1 minus y equals to b0 plus b1x1 plus b2x2 so on till bn xn. Let's move forward and see types of logistic regression. There are three types of logistic regression that can be classified. First one is binomial. In binomial logistic regression, there can be only two possible types of dependent variables like yes or no, pass or fail, man woman and many more. And the second one is multinomial. In multinomial logistic regression, there can be three or more possible unordered ways of dependent variable such as horse, cow and sheep. And the last one is ordinal. In ordinal logistic regression, there can be three or more possible ordered ways of dependent variable such as small, medium or large. Moving forward, let's see decision trees in detail. A decision tree is a tree structured classifier that could be used for classification and regression. A decision tree is a tree in which each non-leaf node is assigned to an attribute. Additionally, each R contain one of the available values for its parent node, which is associated with each leaf node, that is the node from where the arc is directed. Let's see some decision tree terminology. First one is root, that contains the entire data set. The next one is node, a test for the data of a certain attribute. And the third one is branch which connect the node to internal node or the internal node to leaf node. And the fourth one is leaf node, the terminal node that predicts the outcome. Let's move forward and see decision tree algorithms. The first one is select the best attribute to use the current node in the tree. The second one is for each possible values, select the attributes. The third one is partition the examples using the possible values of this attribute and assign these disjoint subset of the example to the appropriate child node. Recursively generate each child node until ideally all examples for a node have the same label like class. Moving forward, let's understand the decision tree. For building a decision tree, step one is select an attribute, then split the data into its children in a tree. Continue splitting with available attributes and keep splitting until leaf node are pure like only one class remains, a maximum depth is reached, a performance metric is achieved. Let's move forward and see SVM algorithm, support vector machine algorithms. A support vector machine is a well-known supervised machine learning model. It is utilized for both information, classification and regression. It is regularly utilized for the grouping issues. We can involve it in different life care system and we can involve it in typically happy or sad look arrangement. We can involve it in filters if we make specific looks. It would add the particular filter according to the expression. The scope of articulation lies between happy and sad. Support vector machine helps in to recognize handwritten characters used widely like checks continue to be the significant part of the majority of non-cash transaction and are frequently written by the pupil. The current check processing system in many developing nations involves a bank employee to read and manually enter the information in a check, while also verifying the data like signature and date. A handwritten text recognition system can reduce expenses and labor hours because a bank must handle several checks each day. Moving forward, let's see the algorithm of SVM. The objective of support vector machine is to make the best line or choice limit that can isolate n dimensional space into classes. So we can undoubtedly put the new data of interest in the right category. Later on, this best decision boundary is known as a hyperplane. Let's move forward and see types of support vector machine. Support vector machine can be of two types. First one is linear SVM. Second one is non-linear SVM. Let's move forward and see linear SVM. 
Linear XVM is utilized for linearly detachable information, which implies if a dataset can be ordered into two classes by utilizing a straight line, then such information a named linearly separable information and a classifier is utilized called linear XVM classifier. Moving forward, let's see nonlinear XVM. Nonlinear XVM is utilized for non directly isolated information, and that implies in the event that a dataset can't be categorized by utilizing a straight line. Such information is named non directed information, and the classifier utilized is called a nonlinear SVM classifier. Moving forward, let's see KNN algorithm in detail. KNN is a supervised learning technique. KNN classifies new data into a targeted classes depending on the features of its neighboring points and also be used for the regression problems. It is an instance based learning algorithm and a bit lazy learning algorithm. KNN calculation stores every one of its accessible information and orders another information point based on the likeliness. This means that when new data information appears, it usually tends to be successfully categorized into a good suit classes using the KNN algorithm. Let's imagine we have an image of animal that resembles a cow or ox. However, here we are not sure if it is a cow or ox. As KNN method is based on a likeness matrix, it will identify the properties of new data that are related to the image of cow or ox. And based on those quality, it will classify the data as belonging to either cow or ox group. Moving forward, let's see how does KNN work. The steps to implement KNN algorithms are Step 1. Decide on the neighbor's K numbers. Step 2. Calculate the Euclidean distance between K neighbors in Step 2. Third one is Based on the determined Euclidean distance, select the K closest neighbors. Step 4 is Count the numbers of data points in each category between these K neighbors. Step 5. Assign the fresh data points in the category where the highest neighbors count and then KNN model is ready. Let's say we need to add a new data point to the vital category. At first, we will decide on the numbers of neighbors. Therefore, we will pick k equals to 5. Then the Euclidean distance between the data points and then can be determined. The distance between two points known as the Euclidean distance can be determined by under root of x2 minus x1 ka whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. Then we determine the closest neighbors by calculating the Euclidean distance. There are three closest neighbors in category A and two closest neighbors in category B. This new data point must fall with category A because as we can see its three closest neighbors are also from group A. After understanding KNN algorithm, let's move forward and see k-means algorithms in detail. The k-means is a cluster falls. Under that is an unsupervised learning algorithm. It is used to address machine learning clustering problems and utilized to tackle the grouping issues in machine learning. It permits us to bunch the information into various gatherings. It is a helpful method for finding the classification of groups in the unlabeled dataset without the requirement of any training. This k-means algorithm groups the data into similar classes. Let's see some application of k-means clustering. Let's see some applications of k-means clustering. Diagnostic system. The medical profession uses k-means clustering in creating smarter medical decision support system, especially in the treatment of liver alignment. The second one is search engine. Clustering forms a backbone of search engine. When a search engine is performed, the search result need to be grouped and the search engines very often use clustering to do this. Moving forward, let's see how k-means algorithm works. The steps to implement k-means algorithms are Step 1. Select the number k to set the number of clusters. Step 2. Select a random k points or centroid. Step 3. Assign each data point the closest centroid that are forms to predefined k cluster. Step 4. Determine the variance and a set of new gravity points for each cluster. Step 5. Repeat the third step. This means reallocating each data point to the new closest centroid cluster. Step 6. If a reassignment occurs, go to step 4, otherwise go to exit. Step 7. The model is ready to use. So, 
Now we have a clear understanding of how k-means algorithm work. Let's move forward to see the graphical representation of k-means algorithm. Consider that there are two variables m1 and m2. This is a scatter plot of these two variables along the x and y axis. We should accept the number of k of bunches that is k equals to 2 to recognize the data set and to place them into various groups. It implies here we will attempt to bunch these data set into two unique groups. We will really want to pick an irregular k point or centroid to frame this group. These centroids can be either the focus of the data set or some of other points. Thus, here we are choosing under two points as k points, which are not the piece of our data set. We will assign every data of interest in the scatter plot to the nearest k point or centroid. We will register it by applying some math that we consider to find the distance between two points, that is Euclidean distance. Thus, we will draw a median between both the centroids. From the graph, the left half of the line are close points to the right and the K1 centroid. Green is near the orange centroid. We should vary them as green and orange for clear representation. As the need might arise to track down the nearest group, we will repeat the cycle by picking another centroid. To pick the new centroid, we will figure out the center point of gravity of these centroids and will track down new centroids. Then we will reassign every piece of information to highlight new centroid. For this, we will repeat a similar course of tracking down a middle line. The middle will be like as seen in the picture, one orange point is on the left half of the line and two green points are on the right. Thus, these three points will be appointed to the new centroids. As reassignment has occurred, we will again go to step 4, tracking down new centroids or k points. We will repeat the cycle by tracking down the center point of gravity of centroids. So the new centroids will be displayed as like this. We now have new centroids, so once more define the middle boundary and reassign the data of interest. By this graph, there are no unique pieces of information on one of the other side of the line, implying our model is shaped. By the previous graph, there are no unique pieces of information on one or the other line, implying our model is shaped. As our k-means model is ready and the two last groups will be displayed as like these. Now we have a clear understanding of how k-means clustering algorithm works. Now let's move forward to understand random forest algorithm. Random forest is an adaptable, simple to utilize machine learning algorithm that produces even without the hyperboundary tuning, an extraordinary outcome, more often than not. It is likewise quite possibly the most utilized algorithm because of its effortness and variety, like it tends to be utilized for both grouping and classification tasks. Random Forest is a classifier that contains various choice trees on different subsets of the given dataset and takes the normal to work on the present exactness of the dataset. Instead of depending on the choice tree, the random forest takes the forecast from each tree and in light of the larger part of words of expectation, it predicts the final result. Now let's move forward and see how does random forest work. We should see the random forest in order since the arrangement is now and again thought to be the structure block of machine learning. This is what a random forest would look like with two trees. The random forest has a similar hypermeter to our decision tree or a badging classifier. Luckily, there is a compelling reason need to consolidate a decision tree with a badging classifier. Since you can undoubtedly utilize the classifier classes of random forest. With random forest, you can likewise manage tasks using the algorithm regressor. Random forest add extra arbitrariness to the model while deploying the trees. Rather than looking for the main element, while parting a node. It looks to the best component among an irregular subset of highlights. These outcomes in a wide variety often result in a superior model. Subsequently, in a random forest, just a random subset of the element is thought about the algorithms. You might make trees more random by involving random edges. For each component, instead of looking for the most ideal limits like a typical choice tree does, Let's move forward and see some application of random forest algorithms. Random forest is involved at work by researchers in numerous ventures, including banking, 
stock exchanging, medication, and many more. It is utilized to predict things which assist these businesses with running productively, like client activity, patient history, and safety. In banking, random forest is used to identify clients who are more likely to pay back their debts on schedule. Additionally, it is utilized to forecast who will make more frequent use of bank services. Even fraud detection uses it. The Robin Hood of algorithms indeed. Random forest is a tool used by stock traders to forecast future stock behavior. Retail businesses utilize it to make product recommendation and forecast client satisfaction. Random forest can be used in healthcare industry to examine a patient medical history and detect disorders. Random forest is a tool used by pharmaceutical experts to determine the ideal mix of ingredients in treatment or to forecast drug sensitivity. By seeing application of random forest algorithm, let's move forward and see some difference between decision trees and random forest. Let's see the difference between random forest and decision tree. The first one is, while building a random forest, the number of rows is selected randomly. In decision trees, it builds several decision trees and find out the output. The second one is, it combines two or more decision trees together. In decision trees, whereas the decision is a collection of variables or data sets or attributes. The third one is, it gives accurate results, whereas it gives less accurate results. The fourth one is, by using random forest, it reduces the chance of overlifting, whereas decision trees, it has the possibility of overlifting. The fifth one is, random forest is more complicated to interpreters. Whereas the decision tree is simple, it is easy to read and understand. After seeing what is random forest, how it works, let's move forward to see a priori algorithm in detail. The a priori algorithm utilizes standard item sets to create affiliation rules and is intended to chip away the information bases containing exchanges. With the assistance of these affiliation rules, it decides how firmly or feebly two objects are associated. This algorithm utilizes a breadth first search and hash tree to work out the item set association effectively. It is the iterative interaction for finding out the successive item set from the huge data set. Let's move forward and see steps for a priori algorithms. The steps for a priori algorithms are Step 1 is establish minimal support and confidence for item set in the transactional database. The second one is Take all transaction supports with a greater support value, the minimum or chosen support value in step 2. The third one is track down all the rules in these subsets with confidence value greater than the threshold value. The fourth one is arrange the rules to lower the lift. At last, we will see some advantages and disadvantages of a priori algorithm. The advantages of a priori algorithms are easy to understand an algorithm, and the second one is the join and prune steps of the algorithms can be easily implemented on the large data set. The disadvantages of a priori algorithms are the a priori algorithms work slowly as compared to the other algorithm. And the second one is the a priori algorithms times and space complexity are O of 2D, which is very low compared to the other ones. Machine learning has improved our lives in a number of wonderful ways. Today, let's talk about some of these. I'm Rahul from Simply Learn, and these are the top 10 applications of machine learning. First, let's talk about virtual personal assistants. Google Assistant, Alexa, Cortana, and Siri. Now, we've all used one of these at least at some point in our lives. Now, these help improve our lives in a great number of ways. For example, you could tell them to call someone. You could tell them to play some music. You could tell them to even schedule an appointment. So how do these things actually work? First, they record whatever you're saying, send it over to a server, which is usually in a cloud, decode it with the help of machine learning and neural networks, and then provide you with an output. So if you ever notice that these systems don't work very well without the internet, that's because the server couldn't be contacted. Next, let's talk about traffic predictions. Now say I wanted to travel from Buckingham Palace to Lord's Cricket Ground. The first thing I would probably do is to get on Google Maps. So, search it. And let's put it here. So here we have the path you should take.
to get to Lord's Cricket Ground. Now here the map is a combination of red, yellow and blue. Now the blue regions signify a clear road, that is you won't encounter traffic there. The yellow indicate that they are slightly congested and red means they are heavily congested. So let's look at the map, a different version of the same map and here as I told you before red means heavily congested, yellow means slow moving and blue means clear. So how exactly is Google able to tell you that the traffic is clear, slow moving or heavily congested? So this is with the help of machine learning and with the help of two important measures. First is the average time that's taken on specific days at specific times on that route. The second one is the real time location data of vehicles from Google Maps and with the help of sensors. Some of the other popular map services are Bing Maps, Maps.me and here we go. Next up we have social media personalization. So say I want to buy a drone and I'm on Amazon and I want to buy a DJI Mavic Pro. The thing is it's close to one lap so I don't want to buy it right now. But the next time I'm on Facebook, I'll see an advertisement for the product. The next time I'm on YouTube, I'll see an advertisement. Even on Instagram, I'll see an advertisement. So here with the help of machine learning, Google has understood that I'm interested in this particular product. Hence, it's targeting me with these advertisements. This is also with the help of machine learning. Let's talk about email spam filtering. Now, this is a spam that's in my inbox. Now, how does Gmail know what's spam and what's not spam? So Gmail has an entire collection of emails which have already been labeled as spam or not spam. So after analyzing this data, Gmail is able to find some characteristics like the word lottery or winner. From then on, any new email that comes to your inbox goes through a few spam filters to decide whether it's spam or not. Now some of the popular spam filters that Gmail uses is content filters, header filters, general blacklist filters and so on. Next, we have online fraud detection. Now there are several ways that online fraud can take place. For example, there's identity theft where they steal your identity, fake accounts where these accounts only last for how long the transaction takes place and stop existing after that, and man in the middle attacks where they steal your money while the transaction is taking place. The feed forward neural network helps determine whether a transaction is genuine or fraudulent. So what happens with feed forward neural networks are that the outputs are converted into hash values and these values become the inputs for the next round. So for every real transaction that takes place, there's a specific pattern. A fraudulent transaction would stand out because of the significant changes that it would cause with the hash values. Stock market trading. Machine learning is used extensively when it comes to stock market trading. Now you have stock market indices like Nikkei. They use long short term memory neural networks. Now these are used to classify, process and predict data when there are time lags of unknown size and duration. Now this is used to predict stock market trends. Assistive medical technology. Now, medical technology has been innovated. With the help of machine learning, diagnosing diseases has been easier, from which we can create 3D models that can predict where exactly there are lesions in the brain. It works just as well for brain tumors and ischemic stroke lesions. They can also be used in fetal imaging and cardiac analysis. Now, some of the medical fields that machine learning will help assist in is disease identification, personalized treatment, drug discovery, clinical research, and radiology. And finally, we have automatic translation. Now, say you're in a foreign country and you see billboards and signs that you don't understand. That's where automatic translation comes of help. Now, how does automatic translation actually work? The technology behind it is the same as the sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning, which is the same thing that's used with chatbots. Here, the image recognition happens using convolutional neural networks, and the text is identified using optical characters recognition. Furthermore, the sequence to sequence algorithm is also used to translate the text from one language to the other. What is a speech recognition system? A program capacity to convert spoken language into written language is known as a speech recognition system, also known as automatic speech recognition. Computer voice recognition or speech to text, despite being sometimes confused with voice recognition. A speech recognition focus on converting speech form a verbal to a text format, whereas voice recognition only aims to distinguish the voice of a certain person. Voice and speech recognition are two distinct technologies, and they shouldn't be confused. To recognize word in spoken language, speech recognition is used. Voice recognition uses biometrical technologies to recognize a specific person by their voice. So after knowing what is the speech recognition system, Let's move forward and see how does this speech recognition system work. Speech recognition in Python works with algorithms that perform linguistic and acoustic modeling. Acoustic modeling is used to recognize phonetics in our speech to get the more significant part of speech as words and sentences. Speech recognition starts by taking the sound energy produced by the person speaking and converting it into the electrical energy with the help of microphone. 
it then converts the electrical energy from analog to digital and finally to the text it breaks the audio data down into sounds and it analyzes the sound using algorithm to find the most probable word that fits that audio all of this is done using natural language processing nlp and neural networks hidden markov models can be used to find temporal patterns in speech and improve accuracy so here is one question for you guys i will give you one minute for this you can comment or you can give your answer in the chat section so i can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong i'm repeating again so here is one question for you guys i will give you exactly one minute for this you can comment or you can give answer in the chat section so i can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong so the question is which of the following is the correct extension for the python file i am repeating again which of the following is the correct extension of the python file option a dot python option b dot pl option c dot py and option d dot p so let us know your answer in the comment section below so i am starting a timer of 1 minute just type your answer in the comment section or in the chat section do let me know your answers please i kindly ask that everyone take part in this to make this live session exciting so i am starting the timer you can comment or you can give your answer in the chat section so i can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong so the question is which of the following is the correct extension of the python file 37 second remaining option a dot python option b dot pl option c dot py option d dot p let us know your answer in the comment section below i kindly ask that everyone take part in this to make the live session exciting you have 15 seconds remaining and seconds more which of the following is the correct extension of the python file 3 2 1 after that allotted time has passed those who provided the correct or response will receive a response and those who provided the incorrect response will receive one okay so now let's move to our programming part to create a speech recognition system using python so first we will open a command prompt to write a command to open jupyter notebook so here we will write jupyter notebook press enter so this is the landing page of jupyter notebook and here you can select new python file so this is how the jupyter notebook ui looks like so at first we will import some major libraries of python which will help us in creating a speech recognition system so here we will write first let me remain rename this speech recog so first i will import import speech underscore recognition and second import pyttsx3 center so the incredibly extension i repeat the incredibly extensible speech recognition library serves as a wrapper for a number of well known speech apis the speech recognition library includes default api key for one of these the google web speech api hard coded that implies that you can start moving without needing to register for a service and python project would benefit greatly from using the speech recognition package due to its versatility and usability and then pyttsx3 a python text to speech conversion library is called pyttsx3 it is compatible with python 2 and python 3 and work offline unlike competing libraries to obtain a reference to a pyttsx3 engine instance an application calls the pyttsx3 in it it is very user friendly program that turns typed text to into speech so moving forward let's write code 
for actual speech recognition system so here i will write sr equals to speech underscore recognition dot recognizer r must be capital here Here I will write with speech underscore recognition dot microphone x source two then colon yeah here I will write print right here okay silence please okay. then i will write here sr dot adjust underscore for underscore ambient underscore noise then source two comma duration equals to two okay then enter then i will print something like speak now please something like that then i will write here audio audio 2 equals to sr dot listen source 2 and here I will write for text equals to sr dot recognize okay. underscore google audio 2 then here I have to print in small letters in lower case so I will write here text equals to text dot lower just then here I will write print it you say plus text yeah everything look great so a recognizer is a machine ability to listen to spoken words and identify them you can then use a speech recognition in python to convert the spoken words into text make a query or a give a reply you can even program some devices to respond to these spoken words like every time the recognized speech from mic function is invoked the recognizer is calibrated for changing noise condition using the adjust for ambient noise this one for ambient noise the backlog parameter of the listen function allow a quiz size to be specified it will listen to what we are speaking or saying this recognize google a function on the recognizer class which you have now developed will be used to query the google web speech api and convert spoken words into text Recognize Google needs the argument audio data in order to function properly, otherwise it will fail. Python built-in function lower is mostly used to handle strings. The lower method converts each capital character in the provided string to lowercase before returning the lower caste string. It accepts no arguments, it returns to the original text if the supplied string has no capital letters. Now let's check whether it's working or not, so I will run it run all hello how are you doing yeah, you can see hello how are you doing printed so let me try another one
subscribe to simply learn youtube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any update from simply learn so here you can see subscribe to simply learn youtube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any update from simply learn is printed so speech to text is working fine so i hope you guys understand till here if you have any questions or any queries regarding any code or you have any questions just put as in comments our team will shortly provide you with the correct solution now moving forward what if you want that system will write what we are saying and speak that too this will be printed and now moving forward what if you want that system will write what we are saying and speak that too so for that we will write a small line of code so first we will do we will create one here like we will insert cell below we will write a function here so df speak now command colon then voice equals to pyttsx3 dot init okay then voice dot say command then voice dot run and wait yeah so what we will do here we will write like speak now then so this voice is nothing just a variable to text to speech and in it pyttx3 engine has started obtains a pointer to an instance of an engine that will utilize the specified driver if another engine instance is already using the given driver the other engine instance is written if not a new engine is built a speak now is a function in which using get function i am getting the values of the text this one i will get now let's run this sort of code and let's see if it is working or not so i will run hello how are you all speak now is not defined okay speak now okay and is small okay my bad run this again hello how are you all hello how are you all i hope you can hear properly so let me run this again for another demo example subscribe to simply learn youtube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any update from simply learn subscribe to simple and youtube channel and press the bell icon to never miss any updates from simply learn yeah so i hope you guys understand till here if you have any question or any queries regarding any code or you have any question related to python just put as in comments our team will shortly provide you with the correct solution okay okay moving forward so at last let's create a speech recognition system from which we can open our websites and all like youtube like facebook like simply learn anything so we will op open new file for this i will create the separate one here i will write speech to web websites okay speech to web so here i will import import speech underscore recognition then import pyttsx3 then one major library import web browser 
okay then i will run it yeah i hope you already know these two first two libraries so this is third library is used for web browser is the file source code the web browser modules offers a high level user interface that enables user to view web based content in most cases executing the open function from the this module will result in the desired outcome so moving forward let me write code for it so i will write code first then i will explain you line wise so i will write if underscore underscore name then again two underscore equals to equals to underscore main then again underscore then colon yeah then you have to give a path like for your browser you can use edge you can use google chrome anything firefox anything so here i will give path path equals to then c drive i have my path already program files and x86 microsoft and edge then okay, then application then ms edge dot exe you have to write at the end this percentage s don't forget to write this okay so path is set so let me create sr equals to speech recognition dot recognizer same as previous one and i will write with speech underscore recognition dot microphone as source then sr dot adjust or ambient noise then source now everything seems good let me write print what we have wrote there like speak now please so here i will write please say something to open okay I will write audio equals to sr dot listen listen that source and I will print like what you said so it will hear hearing And I will here I try and accept then try so here I will write destination equals to sr dot recognize underscore google then audio print here you asked to open right here plus destination okay so then web browser web browser dot get that path then open that destination destination okay so here i will write that accept 
exception exception as you can write e then print if there will be error error stia e okay so i recognize it is a machine ability to listen to spoken words and identify them you can use speech recognition in python to convert the spoken word into text you can even program some devices to respond to these spoken words every time the recognize speech from mic function is invoked the recognizer is calibrated for changing noise condition using the adjust ambient noise method a socket is already to receive connection after calling the listen function prior to performing the accept method on the server socket the listen method should be called the backlog parameter of the listen function allow a queue size to be specified it will listen to what we are speaking or saying the recognize google function on the recognizer class which you have now developed will be used to query the google web speech api and convert spoken words into text recognize google needs the argument audio data in order to function properly otherwise it will fail okay so okay so let's try this it's working or not let me run this Okay, invalid syntax. Perhaps you forgot a comma. Okay, let me see that print error. Ink. It should be here. Yeah. Okay, let me check this. Let me run this again. valid syntax perhaps you forgot a comma okay try to run this again two okay let me remove this i guess it will work fine still Did input okay okay no issues so here I will write again accept exception e int Error. Tr. Okay, I forgot to write plus. Okay, okay. E. Yeah, now it will work fine. www. youtube. com. So here you can see YouTube is open. Yeah. 
so we will try this one more time www.facebook.com so here you can see facebook is open www.facebook.com one more last time www.simplylearn.com On that note, enhance your professional prospects through enrollment in postgraduate program in AI and machine learning from Simply Learn, offered in partnership with both Purdue University and IBM. Acquire sought after competencies encompassing machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, computer vision, reinforcement learning, generative AI, prompt engineering, chat GPT, and myriad of other cutting edge topics. One year of experience is preferred to enroll in this course. Hurry up and enroll now. Find the course link in the description box. So, renting CDs and DVDs, reading local TV listings, watching film strip projectors or recordings. All of this is a thing of the past today. All of the world's biggest film collection have been digitized and moved to the online streaming services like Netflix, HBO or YouTube. These platforms can now help us with what is possibly the most difficult task of all, choosing a movie. They have been enhanced with AI powered capabilities. Well, that is no longer a concern for you. It is finally time for machine learning to put its skills on display in the modern cinematic landscape. To create advanced predictive system for true movie expert, data scientists are prepared to investigate our behavioral patterns and those of movies. A movie recommendation system, also known as a movie recommender system, uses machine learning to predict or filter user fill preferences based on their prior decision and actions. It is an advanced filtration system that anticipate the consumer in question potential like selection for a domain specific item a movie so after seeing what is movie recommendation system let's move forward and see how movie recommendation system actually works a movie recommendation system fundamental idea is a pretty straightforward every recommender system primarily consists of two components users and items user receive more prediction from the system and the actual movies are the products. Filtering and predicting only the movies that a matching user is most likely to wish to see in the main objective of movie recommendation system. The user information from the system database is used by the ML algorithm for these recommendation system. Based on information from the past, this data is used to forecast the user in questions behavior in the future. Data should be handled by expert because it is so crucial to ML projects including the movie recommendation system. After seeing how movie recommendation system works, let's see some filtration strategies for re movie recommendation system. To assist user in finding the most relevant films, movie recommendation system employ a variety of filtration techniques and algorithm. The content based filtering and the collaborative filtering system subcategories of the ML algorithm used for the movie recommendations are the most well liked ones. Filtering based on content or content based filtering, a method of filtering movies in a movie recommendation system that makes advantage of the item's data. This information which is taken from the just one user is quite important in this case. This technique uses an ML algorithm to suggest movies that are comparable to the user's past choices. Therefore, the information about the prior movie choices and likes just one person is used to generate similarity in content based filtering. And the second one is collaborative filtering. As the name implies, this filtering technique is based on the interaction between the relevant person and the other user. For the best outcomes, the system contrasts and compares these behaviors. It combines the film choices and users patterns of several people. Like there are two types of collaborative filtering algorithm. The first one is collaborative filtering based on users. The goal is to find patterns in target users and other database users like movie preferences. And the second one is collaborative item based filtering. The fundamental idea behind this is to find comparable products, products like movies that 
target users rate or interact with so after seeing the filtering strategies for movie recommendation system so here is one question for you guys i will give you one minute for this you can comment or you can give answer in chat section so i can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong i am repeating again so here is one question for you guys i will give you one minute exactly one minute for this you can comment or you can give your answer in chat section so i can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong so the question is which is the best language for machine learning programming which is the best language for machine learning the first one is java the second one is python the third one is r language and the fourth one is c++ so this is the question i am repeating again which is the best language for machine learning the option one is java second python r language and c++ so i am starting timer of 1 minute just type your answers in comment section or in a chat section do let me know your answers please i want that everyone should participate in this and make this live session interesting so i am starting timer so oh, your time starts now please guys do let me know your answers in chat section or in you can comment down Forty two seconds to go. You can comment or you can give your answer in the chat section, so I can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong. Thirty seconds more. Which is the best language for machine learning? You can give your answer in chat section or you can comment. So I can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong. guys come on please i want that everyone should participate in this and make this live section interesting come on guys 5 second more 1 yep time up so time is over we will give reply those who gave correct answer and those who didn't give correct answer we will give you a reply with the correct answer so now let's move to our programming part to perform movie recommendation system using python so first we will open command prompt to write command to open jupyter notebook so we will write jupyter notebook press enter so this is the landing page of jupyter notebook and select here new new python file so this is how jupyter notebook ui look likes so at first we will import some major libraries of python which will help us in mathematical functioning so so the first one is numpy import numpy as np so numpy is a python library used for working with arrays it also has a function for working in the domain of linear algebra and matrices it is an open source project and you can use it freely numpy stand for numerical python so here np np is denoting numpy so we will import the next library import pandas as pd is should be space yep so pandas is a software library written for the python programming language for data manipulation and analysis in particular it offers data structures and operation for manipulating numerical tables and time series so so after importing libraries we will move ahead and import data set so for importing data set we have to write like we have two data set with us let me show you the data set we have two data set with us the first one is credits this one and the second one is movies one this 
one movie is one so don't worry you can get these data set link in the description box so let me write here credits let's go data frame equals to pd dot read underscore csv here you have to give your location of the data set credits dot csv the second one is movies let's go data frame this is for movie data frame pd dot read csv So here you have to give the movie location, movie data set location, movies dot csv. Okay, everything seems good. Let me run this. Yeah. So then, wait. Here PD is for the pandas library. Read is used for reading the data set from the machine, and CSV is used for the type of file which you want to read. So after this, let's write code to see the data set. So we will write here credits underscore df, and we will run it. So this is our so this is our credit data set, and next one is movies underscore. So this is our movie data set. so this is how our board data set look like so here you can see three dots this one and here also this one so we are unable to see our full data set like what if we want like full a 4803 rows so at that case we can write here pd dot set underscore option okay and here we will write display dot max underscore columns this and here we will write none same for the rows pd dot set option display dot max underscore rows none a none let's run this so now if we will write credits underscore df it is running yeah so now you can see your full data set like full credit data set with 4803 rows or 4802 rows because there is this is starting from zero that's why so what about movies data set okay wait running this is still running you can see here so here you can see the um, full data set movie data set with 4802 rows or if you want to see only five top rows so you can write here credits underscore df dot head so by this only five top rows so from head you we can see our five top rows and if we will use tail instead of head we can see our last five rows so here let me do with the movies one df dot tail yeah so here you can see 4798 row 4799 till 4802 so with tail we can see our last five rows so moving forward let's merge the credit data set to movie data set because if we will combine them the confusion will be less and at the end it will be better for us so we will write here movies 
अंडर स्कोर इक्वल्स टू मूवीज अंडर स्कोर डेटा फ्रेम एंड क्रेडिट्स अंडर स्कोर डी एफ ऑन इल ओके टी इज स्मॉल आई गेस या परफेक्ट टाइटन so let me do something something like this okay it is saying data frame object is not callable credits underscore df movies ओके वाई बिकॉज वी हैवन रोट मर्ज हेयर नाउ इट विल वर्क या परफेक्ट इट्स वर्किंग सो डेटा इज मर्ज लेट सी द नंबर ऑफ रोज एंड कॉलम यूजिंग शेयर फंक्शन सो नाउ वी हैव ओनली वन सो मूवीज अंडर स्कोर डी एफ डॉट शेप ओके लेट्स रन इट फोर एट जीरो नाइन एंड टू थ्री ट्वेंटी थ्री बट इफ यू सी here like in movies data set so in movies data set here here yeah yeah there are 20 and in here we are four columns in credit data set so like so you will be thinking that's why not 24 why only 23 columns that is why on title you can see here on title the titles in both titles are same you can see here both titles are same in both okay let me show you like this okay avatar pirates of the caribbean spectre and so on here you can see avatar pirates of the caribbean spectre and so on so that is why on title written while merging so title are same so moving forward let's see our merged data set so we will write only movies underscore data frame dot head yeah so our data is merged you can see the last cast crew movie id yeah you can see here movie id title are the same they are merged cast crew okay guys Let me give some more for the better view yeah so you can see all columns of credit data set are added to movies one so moving forward let's see another function like movies underscore df dot info so by this yes you can see so by this the data frame information is printed via the info method the data includes the total number of columns their labels data kinds memory use range index and the number of cells in each columns like non null values note that info method does indeed print the information so here you can see the all the information is printed okay like columns name and the all null values count and data types too like this int object int in which we are working most so after this let's move forward and select some main column in which we are working most so we will write movies underscore df equals to movies underscore df score d title comma and another one is overview okay why okay here we have to get like this yeah so here we have to write journal journal is complete and we will work on what keywords keywords are the main 
keywords okay keywords then to cast then we will we will do recommendation with the uh, crew as well okay so by running this let me see our data again with seven okay okay there is one error okay this is movie the movie the idea of genre no? yeah not in index okay got it got it why not genre it's genres i guess what it is it's genres that's why it's genres okay yeah so let's see our data again with seven columns so i will write so i will write here movies underscore df dot head yeah so you can see only our we have like movies id same title overview genres keywords cast and crew only so here you you can see the selected columns okay so let's move forward and once again let's see the info again like movies underscore df dot info is come with selected columns and let's move forward and see how many missing values are present in particular column so like the columns is full we can see here but we don't know about that 4803 values are filled or not so what we will do it we will see how many missing values are present there so here we will write like movies underscore df dot is null dot sum not like this yeah perfect so the function data frame is null this one is null dot sum dot sum returns the number of missing values in the data set so here you can see overview have three missing values so what we can do is we can write here um, movies underscore df df dot drop na this equals to true okay we will run it but sayings okay words document drop in a was it true okay fine dot underscore drop in a and yeah it will not create any issue so if you set in place equal to true the drop any method will modify your data frame directly that means that if you set in place equal to true the drop any will drop all missing values from your original data set let's move forward and see movies underscore df dot duplicated So the duplicate method returns a series with true or false values that describe which rows in the data frame are duplicated or not. Use the subset parameter to specify if any column should not be considered when looking for duplicates. So here, let me run this first. So here we are we are getting zero. Why zero? So if you are like thinking there is no true or false return, so if you write it without sum, like if i will write it without sum okay let me copy from here yeah and i will run this so here you can see false 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 in whole data set so sum will combine them and return you a value at the end zero represent false itself so we need to not need this so we will write something else so moving forward let me write first movies underscore df dot i location zero dot genres let me run this 
so the i log function this one i log function first let me do something like this it will go up okay ha huh. okay so from i log function in python is defined in the pandas module that helps us to select a specific row or column from the data set using the i log method in python we can easily retrieve any particular value from a row or column by using index value so here zeroth position line is coming which is here you can see so name action like name action name adventure name fantasy this sci fiction this one science fiction yeah so this is because i am giving here genre that is why you can see here see id 28 name action name something 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 like that okay so let's import something called ast abstract syntax tree so this is one of the major library import ast let me run this import is a class defined is the ast module that is used to express the import statement in python in the form of abstract syntax tree so so an abstract syntax tree or just syntax tree is a tree representation of the of the abstract syntactic structure of text written in a formal language each node of the tree denotes a construct occurring in the text so let's convert some like literal to object and append them so here i will write def convert obj object like l equals to blank array for i in ast dot well bit bb which object okay like l dot append return here we are converting is like here is a convert is a function and l is a array to append by using for loop we can append them to name so let me write code then i will explain like what is happening so let me write full code so movies underscore df like donors okay goes to movies donors and then dot apply what so then movies underscore df then i will write keywords just to movies underscore df keywords apply underscore df dot so if we will see our old data set in that like we will see old data set in that genre and that's keyword this keyword apps id name and so on like id that name like this type of things so it will create a mess in retrieving them so by using ast library we just convert them to the normal one like title so got it guys so i hope you guys understand till here if you have any question or any query regarding any code or question 
just put as in comment our team will shortly provide you the correct solution i'm repeating again i hope you guys understand till here if you have any type of questions regarding any code or something so just put as in comments our team will shortly provide you the correct solution so moving forward let's convert cars to and like same as previous way like like this only so what we will do here we will write def convert them here i am using so l equals to counter equals to 0 st dot literal if counter does not equals to 3 then l dot l dot dot append okay then here i have to write i to name okay counter equals to 1 if you want to write like counter is equals to counter plus 1 it is like both the same else like turn l so let me run this let me run this Okay, so after this small code, we have to assign the values. Like we are doing it for cars now. So movies. Okay, movies. Let's go D F. Then cast. Let's do movies. Underscore D F. Cast. Dot. Lie. convert everything seems good so let's see the changes are visible or not so we will write here movies underscore df dot head you can ignore this like this is nothing so here you can see cast is also same like keyword and journal so like let's do for the crew too so like we are converting you can say in a structured way so let's do for the crew one two so let me put some yeah so here we will add def uh, like fetch which is nothing like a function name fetch director obj okay colon l equals to or i n a s t dot literal obj if i job so it equals to like we can say director so then l dot append l dot append hmm l dot append to the same name but return k okay, capital l so we have to again write that movies rio 
equals to movies in crew lie just remember fetch director is a function name let's see changes so here i have to write movies then present so yeah crew is all set so changes are visible and data is looking good so what we like if i want to see the first movie avatar overview this like this dot 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 so i have to write here like movies overview overview at jirot place so yeah so this is a full overview of avatar movie like let me read for this in this uh, 22nd century a paraplegic marine is dispatched and blah 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 and civilization so moving forward that what we want to recommend movie in the basis of overview genre keyword cast so for that we need a separate separate words like in the then 22nd century along so if you will see in other columns all the words are separated but like here if you will see all the words are separated like action is separated adventure is separated fantasy is separated so there is a long sentence in this this one in the overview one there is a long sentence so it's difficult to recommend from this so what we are going to do is well we will separate them like like other columns so here we will write movies overview first two movies then overview and dot apply apply my bad sorry then lambda colon x dot split yeah order so let's see the results so movies yeah you can see in the set word so now you can see all the words are separated by comma so now it will easy to match overview to recommend a particular movie so moving forward so what we are going to do is if there is a two word and space between there so we are going to remove that space so here you can see science fiction are separate separate okay so we are going to re like remove this one this space so let's write code for that so here i will write like overview is already done so we will do not do for that so let's write code for the rest columns so here i have to write movies like genres plus so movies and again genres apply lambda x i dot replace is ma to no space oh uh, it seems good then i have to write for everywhere so for i in x it's for i in x for i in x movies genres equals to movie genres dot apply lambda x i dot replace this to this for seems good so let's copy paste this see one for keywords and one for cast and crew it's 
Last. First. Then you. Test is same. So let me run this. Okay, no error seems good. So let's see the changes. So movies. So now you can see the science fiction space is gone. Like here is science fiction space is there. Now science fiction space is gone. Yep. So like, uh, okay, let's move forward and create one new column name as tag and put all the column data in a particular column. Okay, let me do first. Yeah, let me write movies. is a column over column name goes to movies then first we will put overview plus movies and genres and movies and what we have to give uh, keywords keywords then again movies then past we run this okay so let's see the data frame uh, movies Okay, still coming. So, like there is one problem, I guess. Yeah, no, no, no. So here you can see all the data is merged in a under tag column. Yes, you can see like in the second century, blah blah blah. So I hope you guys understand till here. If you have any question or any query regarding any code. Or anything just put as in comment or our team will shortly provide you the correct solution okay so i'm repeating again i hope you guys understand till here if you have any question or any query regarding any code or like any question just put as in comment our team will shortly provide you the correct solution so from here let's create a new data frame okay so let me create new data frame because now we don't need this overview cast crew genre like columns like this we have already merged into a one one column like tag column so we will write here new df equals to movies okay so like movies we need movie id new data frame we need movie id comma we need title and we have everything in tag column tags column so we need tags column okay let's run this let's see our new data frame yeah. so this is how our new data look like with only three columns like uh, movie id title and tags so here you can see array brackets like this this array brackets so we are gonna uh, remove them so we will do what we will write here we will write new data frame that in tax equals to new data frame tax dot apply lambda x then I will give space dot join seems good everything is okay okay fine yeah so let's see the results so 
we will write here new underscore data frame so you can see the brackets are removed now let's see the data which is present in the zeroth index in tag column like this dot 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 in the same okay for that we have to write here uh, a new data frame tags we did it before like for the overview uh, so here you have to write, yeah so this is the whole data in the first like first index zeroth index so some part of the overview like from civilization and some are you can see this action adventure fantasy science fiction these are some like genres and uh, like here you can see like these are some crews members and yeah like sam worthington like there are some cast crew okay so like moving forward like what we are going to do is just make them in lower case for the better prediction like s something in capital and something in like smaller so let's make it to lower case so new underscore df tax equals to new underscore df tax dot apply yeah colon x dot lower okay so don't worry about this error let's see the result uh, new underscore df dot yeah now all the data present at tag column is in small case or you can say lower case moving forward let's do some feature extraction using count vectorizer so let, let me write first from sklearn dot feature extraction feature extraction okay cool and dot text import count vectorizer cv equals to count riser underscore features features equals to like 5000 top words equals to english and this yeah so count vectorizer okay there is a I cannot import count vectorizer from sklearn from user okay okay sorry sorry my bad here v is capital okay guys so he v is capital yeah so no error so count vectorizer is a great tool provided by the scikit-learn library in python it is used to transform a given text into a vector on the basis of the frequency count of each word that occurs in the entire text so let me write something cv dot with underscore transform f x like dot to array shape okay so the fit method like learns a vocabulary dictionary of all tokens in the raw documents that is it creates a dictionary of tokens by default the tokens are words separated by spaces and like punctuation so that maps each single token to a position in the output matrix so here cv is a like here cv is a counter vectorizer 
So let's convert into vector to array. So for this, we have to write vectors. Vectors equals to cv dot fit. Okay, then transform. X sin. So here we have to write dot to array. Yeah, then we have to write vector. its vectors yeah you can see vector to array all the zeros okay so moving forward let's get the feature name by writing okay so we will write here lian lan cv dot get feature feature names Feature names okay then bracket yeah so okay we have like 500 feature names so I'm repeating I'm saying again like I hope you guys understand till here if you have any question or any query regarding any code whatever it is so just put as in comments our team will shortly provide you the correct solution okay guys like any code or you are not understand anything just put as in comment our team will shortly provide you the correct solution so let's import some major library which is import nltk so what is nltk the natural language toolkit nltk is a platform used for building python programs that work with human language for applying in statical natural language processing nlp it contains text processing libraries for tokenization, parsing, classification, stemming, tagging, and semantic reasoning. So moving forward, like from, let me write first, from an NLTK dot stem dot porter import porter Yes, equals to water. Stemming is a process for reducing a word to its word stem that suffix and prefix or to the roots of words known as a lemma. Stemming is important in natural language understanding NLU and natural language processing NLP. So here, like I have to write, so here I will write def stem to text y equals to or i in text dot split y dot append dot stem done dot join why? So let's apply stemming to a tag column. So here we will write a new df tags so equals to new df tag dot apply stem. So let's import uh, cosine similarity from sklearn. So here we will write from sklearn 
dot matrices dot pairwise import cosine underscore similarity okay it seems good from sqln matrices matrix sorry matrix dot pairwise it is pairwise pairwise import cosine similarity okay let's run this no error so cosine similarity measures the similarity between two factor I repeat, cosine similarity measures the similarity between two vectors of an inner product space. It is measured by the cosine of the angle between two vectors and determines whether two vectors are pointing in roughly the same direction. It is often used to measure document similarity in text analysis. So here we will write cosine underscore similarity. vectors so these all are the vector present let's see the cosine similarity vector column and row using space so here i will write cosine cos similarity vectors dot shape so it's still running you can see here yeah so 4806 rows and 4806 columns are there let's assign variable similarity to this okay so let's similarity we'll write like this that is also cosine similarity underscore here why did this because we don't have to write always this long sentence a long keyword you can say so moving forward let's see first column like we will write similarity yeah so this is our first column uh, so let's see the rows only so we will write here clarity 0 dot shape okay, 4 it's 0 6 okay so let's move forward and let's create some like sorted list so for that sorted List enumerate spelling is fine. Uh, okay, one more uh, like similarity, similarity zero where I have to write reverse equals to true, comma key equals to lambda colon x not capital X x to write one one colon six seems good so the enumerate function in python converts a data collection object into an enumerate object enumerate returns an object that contains a counter as a key for each value with an object making item within a collection easier to access so finally let's create the recommend function to check the movie recommendation system okay so so let's write here def recommend we 
Let's so new df in the df title equals to equals to movie x zero then says equals to similarity and movie okay so movies list equals to sorted list numerate rt numerate distances reverse was to true keyword sorry key only key equals to lambda x colon x one and colon six or i in movies list f dot i lock i zero zero dot title we because we need title only so uh, yeah it seems good okay so finally that like time is came so finally the time has come to check the recommendation of your favorite movies so you can comment the, in the chat section so i can check so let me write first recommend recommend for movie avatar okay so here you can see the recommendation system is working fine so titan a dot e small soldier independence day are the recommendation for the movie avatar so let me check for the another one recommend like for one of my favorite movie iron man So here you can see Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, Avengers Age of Ultron, Captain America and the Avengers are the recommendations for the movie Iron Man. So let me check for the one more recommend. Liars. Liar. It is going on 30 and the last one is last one i want to check is captain america civil war let me copy from here only yeah you can see the captain america the first avenger the winter soldier iron man 3 age of ultron the avengers did you know microsoft is planning to invest 10 million dollars in chat gpt developer even silicon valley's biggest conglomerates have begun to take note of chat gpt versatility and practicality People have started earning money through ChatGPT and some even predict the revolutionary AI chatbot will replace Google search. But what makes ChatGPT so resourceful? What ChatGPT is and how it works? And at the end, we will discuss some of the ways that ChatGPT is being used in the real world, the potential implications of this technology. From chatbots to language translation, ChatGPT has many applications that make it easier for businesses and individuals to interact with technology. So hello everyone, I am Mank and welcome to Simply Learn. Make sure you are subscribed to our channel and hit that bell icon to stay updated with the latest technological trends. Before we move on to the demo part, let's discuss what ChatGPT is and proceed further for the same. So what is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is a conversational language model 
created by OpenAI. It is a form of generative pre-trained transformed GPT model which was trained on a data set of conversational prompts such as dialogue snippets and chat logs. The model is capable of generating human-like responses to text input. So now let's understand how chat GPT actually works. This model is pre-trained on a large text data set and then fine-tuned on a smaller data set specific to the everyday task. When the model receives input from a user, it uses the pattern it learned during fine-tuning to generate a response. Let's take another example. The model can generate an appropriate response even if the input is not a complete question or a sentence. After seeing what is ChatGPT and how it works, now moving forward, let's see how we can use ChatGPT in our day-to-day -day life. So this is a Google search. Here we will write chat.openai.com slash chat. It will take time. So this is the chat window UI of the chat GPT. So our first use case is chat GPT can explain complex subjects. Okay. So first we will ask like what is neuroscience? It will take time. It's taking time to load because many of the users are using it started. Neuroscience is the scientific study of the nervous system which includes the brain. It will write all about the neuroscience. You can ask anything, any subject. Okay, like hard to hard, easy, any. Or even you can stop generating too if you want to. Okay. So this is how you can ask like any question to the, any complex question to chat GPT. Okay. Uh, we'll ask one more like what is quantum it's loading i don't know why it's taking time because of net issue or i don't know why take time and it will come quantum compute is a field of computer science that uses properties of quantum mechanics to perform operations on data like this okay Two states, zero or one, and all the quantum computing knowledge. Okay. So this is how you can ask anything like any com about any complex subject to the chat GPT. Okay. So with chat, our second use case is we can write code using chat GPT. Okay. We can write. So here I will give give me a machine learning program for prediction okay press enter okay so here it's started here is a simple python program that uses scikit learn library this 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 and this okay. this is how you can take write a code any code if you ask anything like sorting like add two numbers or, or palindrome anything you can anything you can ask from chat gpt it will give you a code proper code very right please note that this is a simple example of sort prediction is a complex task and this example is not enough to make a good prediction it would need a lot more data feature engineering and model tuning to make accurate prediction okay so let me give another java implementations implementation of the um, what bubble algorithm okay let me ask this Yeah, it started. Like here is a Java implementation of the bubble sort algorithm. So, give you proper runnable algorithm. Okay, like bubble sort. Full, full. Give you full. You 
you can ask any type of code any type of like apis anything it will explain to this implementation uses nested loops to compare adjacent elements in the array and swap them if they are in the wrong order okay and then after the outer loop completes the array will be sorted in ascending order our third use case is we can debug the code okay so for that what i will i will take this one code okay i will take this code and here i will write debug the code and i will paste it here and what i will do i will instead of temp here i will write i will write okay i will write the 2p okay so now what it will do chat gpt will do it will debug see the error in the code is in the this line okay arrj tmp it should be temp you can see here it is temp so from chat gpt you can debug the error okay you can have the conversation with the full the chat gpt like if you have any question you can directly write what's wrong in the above question and like this okay like you have an extra p in this variable name which is causing a compile error this is because temp is the variable that you declared earlier to store the value of current element whereas temp is not a variable that has been declared so here you can see this temp is declared here so that is why the error is causing the code not to run once you fix the issue okay like sort the array in ascending order using the double sort algorithm okay so using chat gpt you can easily debug your errors the code and it is very helpful on your project building okay so our fourth use case is you can create custom marketing plans or strategy okay i'm repeating again you can create custom marketing plans or strategy like how so here i will write how should promote videos on social media okay present it will give you proper plan how you can promote your youtube videos on your social media okay i will chat with this okay i will ask some question to increase views engagement everyone knows here are a few strategies you can use see first second and more like more to come like share your video on personal social media accounts this include your facebook twitter instagram and other accounts thing like that join relevant communities and groups true use social media ads platform like facebook insta instagram and twitter collaborate with influencer it is also true create a hashtag for your videos use youtube video built-in sharing features it will give you all the marketing plans it can create marketing plans any type of plans see remember your video should be engaging informative and should be provide value to our audience it is something like that now i will ask one question to chat gpt okay so i will ask what if make only travel videos okay what if i will make only okay travel videos so how should i capture the audience you can ask any type of question okay relevant to this question or this answer you got okay now let's see it will give you everything if you are making travel videos there are like few strategies you can use to capture and engage your audience like this okay show the unique interesting aspect of the destination you visit people are often drawn to new and unique experience like say share your personal experience and insights it will give you a proper plan like how you can increase your audience engage your audience okay
collaborate with other travel bloggers. It's true. Engage with the audience by responding to comments, messages. True. Remember, your video should be visually appealing and provide valuable information to your audience. It is also important to be authentic and true to yourself. Like this. Okay, so this is how you can, like using ChatGPT, how you can create your marketing plans or your something like that. Okay. So a fifth use case is we can generate articles and blogs using ChatGPT. Okay. So let me ask, write an article machine learning because ChatGPT is also machine learning kind of machine learning on machine learning in 500 words present tense it will write only exactly like 500 words it will give you only 500 words like machine learning is rapidly growing field that is transforming the way we live and work. It is a branch of artificial intelligence, blah, blah. The basic idea of machine learning is that computers can learn from data without being explicitly programmed. Like supervised learning is the most common type of the machine learning. Yes, true. Now, you can see here there are three main types of machine learning, supervised learning and supervised and reinforcement. It's true. It will tell about like it will write a proper article in only 500 words not more than that okay okay machine learning has a potential application variant in healthcare machine learning algorithm patient data and more accurate diagnosis like this I wrote 500 words. It will give you exactly 500 words. Write your conclusion also. In conclusion, machine learning is rapidly growing field that has the potential to professionalize many industries. It allows computers to learn from the data without being explicitly programmed. Something like this. Okay. So this is 500 words of article. Okay, you can ask, write article, video descriptions, blogs, any kind of content writing you can see. Okay, so let's do one more question in the same. So I will write, give me a funny on to write, um, okay for my YouTube channel YouTube channel YouTube shorts videos video on cyber security okay so here is a short script for funny YouTube video on cyber security like narrator Welcome to the world cyber city where every click could be your last exactly <laughs> so something like that so and always use strong password like password one two three or four t narrator tip number two never click on suspicious link unless it's linked to be a, to free pizza see this is how you can create your funny how you can generate your content from chat gpt using chat gpt okay Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Please note that this script is just for fun. Exactly, we know. And not mean to be taken seriously. It's important to take cyber security seriously and follow best practices to protect your personal and professional data. Okay. So, this is how you can write your, make your content so easily. Like by writing the title of the content. So, our sixth use case is you can even summarize the book or article using chat gpt like how i will write here summarize the book gulliver's travel okay. 
syllabus travels is a novel written by Jonathan Swift. In this, the book tells the story of Lemuel Gulliver, a ship surgeon who becomes shipwrecked. It will light only and will summarize all about Gulliver travel. Yeah, in part one, this happened. Gulliver washes up on the island of Lilliput. Yeah, exactly. Who this happened and part three this happened so this is how you can summarize any book any related to like educational novel fiction any type of book or article and blogs okay whatever you want to summarize page will run the book is being commented on the Society of Swift on time. Okay, so this is how you can summarize the book Gulliver's Travel. Our seventh use case is we can ask interview question two using ChatGPT. So here I can ask how to answer interviewer. Viewer, what is your weakness? Okay. So when answering the question, it is the best to be honest, but also to frame your answer in a positive way. Yeah, exactly. For example, you could say something like, I have a tendency to be perfectionate and sometimes struggle with delegating task. However, I've been working on this learning like this you can ask any question any interview type question okay related to hr or technical anything you can ask so let's see how to answer the interviewer uh, like where do you see yourself in next five years okay. take so when answering this question it's good idea to be aligned your answer with the company's goals and values yeah exactly for example, you could say something like, in five years, I can see myself growing within the company and taking more responsibility, exactly. So this is how you can ask any type of HR questions you're facing off, okay? So our next use case is, our eighth use case is, we can develop apps using ChatGPT, okay? Yes, we can develop apps using ChatGPT. Like, I want to write an Android app that shows me stock prices as a list from uh, let's see Yahoo API okay or how can I do like this so it will write a proper Android app code for you with a new Android project or it will give you a proper idea how you can make up you know app all these steps from starting to the last use a view holder to hold the reference of the views for each item in the list okay use asynchronous tasks to fetch all this step from starting to the end. 
this is a brief overview of the steps and you will need to take a build android app okay okay so this is how you can like ask anything to create a app okay using any language flutter java python any language okay oh, i repeat our ninth use case is we can create our exercise plan diet plan using chat gpt okay so i will write my weight is 25 okay let's take 25 kg and i want to lose weight create seven days create seven days plan for the exercise and hike plan for it okay it will create see here is a day exercise and the diet plan that can help you lose day one exercise 30 minutes Risk walk or jog. Diet start your day with a healthy breakfast of oatmeal, berries, like this. It will create exactly seven days. Okay, so this is our ninth use case. We can make any type of plan, diet plan, food plan, exercise plan, or anything like marketing strategy, anything you want. Timetable. Of focusing something anything you can make and according to you yourself you can rearrange them okay it will be very easy and it is very time saving okay it will create seven days plan day six exercise 60 minutes strength training session like this right this you want to lose your daily healthy breakfast avocado toast with post that So it's important to note that this is just a plan, simple plan. So our tenth use case is last use case. If you can ask any general knowledge questions to ChatGPT, like, okay, who invented first? Invented by German goldsmith. Yeah. You can cross question to chat GPT answer. Okay. This is the all the use case of chat GPT. Like it can debug the code, audit the code, like explain complex subject, create custom marketing plan or strategy, diet plan, exercise plan. You can generate your content like article, blogs. You can summarize the book and the articles or interview question preparation or developing apps, coding. You can easily do with the chat GPT. Okay. I hope you understand how to use chat GPT and what is chat GPT. Okay. And the use cases of chat GPT and where you can use in day to day life. On that note, enhance your professional prospects through enrollment in postgraduate program in AI and machine learning from Simply Learn, offered in partnership with both Purdue University and IBM. Acquire sought after competencies encompassing machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, computer vision, reinforcement learning, generative AI, prompt engineering, chat GPT, and myriad of other cutting edge topics. One year of experience is preferred to enroll in this course. Hurry up and enroll now. Find the course link in the description box. The evolution of natural language processing has come a long way. Today, we have a variety of AI language models that are fully operational and have the potential not just to decode your question, but also smart enough to understand the intention behind your questions. Out of the countless number of development and the emerging ones like Megatron, Albert, Electra, T5 and many more. These three models are currently ruling the space of AI language models, Bing, Bard and ChatGPT. 
and today we will understand the differences, similarities and the abilities that make them stand out and try to decide which one is the best. Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel and today we bring you the Bing versus the Google Bard, the chat GPT. But before we begin, if these are the type of videos you would like to watch, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. If you are an aspiring artificial intelligence engineer looking for an online training and certification from the prestigious universities and in collaboration with leading experts so that you have the most robust foundation skills, knowledge and what it takes to become the best, then search no more. Simply Learn's post-graduation program in artificial intelligence from Purdue University in collaboration with IBM should be your right choice. For more details, use the link in the description box below. Also, want to get access to more informative content like this one? Get subscribed to us and hit the bell so that you're the first to get to know when we host. With that in mind, let's start with the elephant in the room, that is the chat GPT. Chat GPT was released on the 30th of November 2022. It uses the GPT LLM to elaborate. LLM is an abbreviation for large language model and ChatGPT is globally available to its users using the generative pre-trained transformer also called as ChatGPT LLM with 1 trillion parameters as its variables learned during the model training. Now the Bing. Microsoft was one of the largest investors in OpenAI. Bing is an AI language model created in collaboration with OpenAI and publicly released on the 4th of May 2023. Bing uses the same dataset that ChatGPT uses. Bing has an edge over ChatGPT as Microsoft integrates its Prometheus with about 135 billion parameters. Now, next up we have BARD. BART is Google's answer to ChatGPT with limited capabilities and lukewarm responses. It was released on 21st of March 2023. BART initially started off with Lambda LLM with a caliber of 137 billion parameters. Google's CEO assures BART will switch to pathway model named as Palm 2 LLM with about 400 billion plus parameters to take on ChatGPT head-on head in generating responses and the application codes and programs. With the details discussed, let's move ahead to some of the important parameters to be considered to discuss the differences. Firstly, user interface and experience. ChatGPT has a simple and subtle interface, making it easy to understand and get along with the usage. So, ChatGPT's user interface looks something like this. ChatGPT has a simple dark theme interface focusing on providing users with high quality language processing capabilities rather than immersive visuals. You can ask questions, get answers, and even you can ask to enhance or optimize the answer according to your needs. Again, user needs to manually request ChatGPT. On the other hand, Bing is more inclined towards giving a blissful visual experience to their users by choosing brilliant background images, colorful interfaces and emojis. So a typical Bing user interface looks something like this. In addition to that, it is backed up by ChatGPT's dataset and Prometheus LLM to help users with the best in class answers to their questions. It even delivers three different answers at the same time. Creative balanced and precise are the three variants and you can choose the best ones which suits your requests now lastly bard bard is a little different from others unlike others bard just dumps the answers at once enthusiasts call it fast but it misses the human touch of giving the answers in a word by word typing manner yet similar to bing it manages to give you different versions of the answers besides that bard has a decent interface and its logo shines with multiple colors, giving you the feeling of part processing the data to give you a better result. Now, let's try to ask a few most frequently asked questions to part ChatGPT and Bing. Let's ask with a simple one. Are you friends with? ChatGPT and Bing. You can see the shining logo of Bard and you have just seen the way how Google Bard answers you. It just dumps the answer. Now, if you go or if you ask the same question to 
the other ones like ChatGPT and Bing. Let's see how they respond. And you can see you have other drafts as well, right? So you can see draft one, draft two, and draft three. So you can choose any ones which you feel are more optimized and, you know, deliverable according to your requests, right? Now let's go back to Bing, right? Now let's ask the same question. Are you friends with ChatGPT and but See, the word by word typing approach of Bing and ChatGPT give you a little more immersive feeling that somebody is really talking to you, right? And you also have the freedom of choosing the answer wisely, right? So it gives you three different options, which are creative, balanced, and precise, right? And on just one single scroll, you have the Bing search open here right this is one other good way of using bing in the in case if you have any questions that are unanswered or which did not satisfy you you can also go back to bing and you can manually search for the data and get the information right now let's get back to chat gpt and here let's ask the same question are you friends with bing and bard so that's how individual ai models respond to each other and now let's get back to the next point of discussion which is what is the data or history about the questions you asked or the prompts you have opened that each one of these stores so this is about the conversation history or the prompt that you have with individual one of these ai models First comes the ChatGPT. ChatGPT claims they do not store any data about its interaction with its users. But in ChatGPT, you can access the prompts and questions you asked. You can also export your transcripts in ChatGPT. On the other hand, we have Bing. Bing says they do not have any history or prompts of your previous conversations as well. And lastly, Bard. Bard is a little mix and match of both. So what Bard does is, it stores only the prompts whereas in chat GPT when you ask a question it will store the question and the answer it gave you but but it will only store the prompt that is the question you asked and note the answer it gave to you so with that the next point of discussion would be the mobile version of each one of these as of now chat GPT hasn't released any of the official mobile application version yet and on the other hand on Bing it has just one click of a button and you can click it and Bing launches on your mobile phone and Bing has a mobile variant with similar and much better aesthetics that can get started on a touch of an app launcher and lastly we have Bard. Bard has a similar approach to its mobile variant. Google has enabled Bard usage in Google mobile application as well and now comes the number of questions asked. Disclaimer, if you want to work on a project, presentation or thesis, choose your AI model wisely. Because if you are close to wrapping up your project and the AI model says, sorry pal, you're out of your wishes. Yes, you heard me right. A few of these language models have a limitation on the number of questions asked on one single topic or one single keyword or one single concept. Let's look into details. Before we proceed to the next part of this video, let's take a minute to hear from our learners who have experienced massive success in their careers. Hey, I'm Shariar Jalil. I live in Ontario, Canada. I have been in IT sector for the past 20 years. I recently took the professional certificate program in artificial intelligence and machine learning. The course has changed the way I look at things and helped me back some amazing freelance projects. I started my career in 1999 and over the years I have worked with many companies. My last tenure was with IBM Canada. My aim was to restart my career and learn something that would help accelerate my career. I thought artificial intelligence can make me future ready. The course in 
Artificial intelligence and machine learning is provided by Simply Learn in association with Purdue University, which is why I chose the course. I did not have high expectations from online course, but my experience was simply awesome. The quality of interaction within the course was simply amazing. The course faculty was also very experienced and knowledgeable. After the course, my knowledge has grown manifold. I have immensely benefited from Python and coding skills. I am able to get some new freelance projects. Also, I am planning to start an AI-based startup with my friend where I feel that the learning from the course to be very helpful. I am really delighted and happy. In my free time, I try to create meaningful content on YouTube and I talk about new technologies and what kind of courses professionals should be taking along with many other topics. I definitely recommend this course to everyone. After all, when it comes to new skills to advance your career, there should be no compromise. You should always learn from the best. First comes ChatGPT. ChatGPT takes 25 questions on a single keyword or a single subject or a single topic of discussion. Post that, it refrains from answering your questions. Same with Bing. It takes no more than 20 questions on single keyword or a single topic or a single concept. But now comes Brad. Brad is a little different. Brad kind of set stakes a little too high. It almost has no limits to your questions. You can ask any number of questions to Brad and that can be a real deal breaker. Lastly, we will differentiate these AI models based on their productivity. Yes, exactly. We do know all these three models are smart, but how smart exactly? How humanly are they? How close are they in convincing you with an optimistic answer? What's their potential to judge a hypothetical question and give you a balanced answer? Sounds interesting, right? Let's get started. First, let's start with ChatGPT. So let's say I want to learn AI and machine learning. So obviously this should be able to teach me that. Let's ask it. Can you teach me artificial intelligence machine learning? Brilliant. It gave me a brief about artificial intelligence, machine learning, types of machine learning, and deep learning in one go. And it also convinced you here, right? Yes, as an AI model, I can certainly help you with that, right? So it's a good answer. Now let's try to ask a little different one. Or can it plan an itinerary? Or can it buy me a product online? Or can it do some uh, other things like booking me an Uber, right? So let's try, can you purchase an online training program? For AI and ML. Brilliant. ChatGPT knows its limits, right? As an AI model, I cannot directly purchase online, right? It's giving you the brutal truth here. That's good. And apart from that, it also gave you a step-by-step -step procedure to buying your course. Do your research, check the curriculum, check the instructor, what's the format, what's the course, right? A few parameters which you might want to consider before buying a course. Right. So now let's try to question the same queries to Bing. So since Bing and ChatGPT share the same training data set, I could expect a similar answer, but let's see. 
it is taking a while i guess prometheus is a little slower compared to gpt okay there might be a connection issue let's ask the question once again Wow, it's way too better than ChatGPT. So it is even asking you details on if you if you are looking for a specific topic or a general overview. Let's say I would need a general overview. I could straight away say Bing is a little more smarter and productive compared to ChatGPT, but still we have one more contender to compare with, Bard, right? so there might be again the internet connection now let's say we refresh bing once again and straight away ask the second question what we had right that is can you buy me a course online course for learning artificial Bing did give me a good answer for the previous question. Let's see what kind of an answer it gives me now. I'm sorry, but I'm not capable of making online purchases. However, I can find you some online courses for learning AI. Would you like me to search for some options? Brilliant. So this is a little more optimized answer compared to ChatGPT once, and it is also honest. It does know its limits. Fine, it can help you search for some online courses but again uh, chat gpt gave us some parameters to consider right so i would give or i would choose to tie them up here they are on a tie now our last contender that is bard let's try to ask the same questions to bard so here is bard now let's try to ask questions to bard let's say can you teach me machine learning you can see the BARD logo shining there. Now, it should be dumping the answer anytime soon. Yeah, of course, we do miss that humanly touch of giving the answer in a word by word typing way. Let's refresh and ask the question again. Can you teach me machine learning? This is a little too straightforward. I'm a language model and don't have the capacity to help you out. So, okay, let's not give up here. Let's try to ask the second question. Can you purchase an online training program to me to learn machine learning? Yes, I can help you purchase an online program for machine learning. Here are a few things that you need to consider. Good. It's not being brutally honest here. It is saying it can help you out. So again, what I intended to expect here was you cannot just directly buy an online program, right? You need some details, credentials, and everything to purchase. So again, it is sugarcoating the answer, and it is definitely giving you suggestions similar to chat GPT, but a little different, which focuses on your learning style, level of experience, your budget. Good, nice way to answer some questions like this one. So all these three ones are brilliant and good in their own way. So it might be a little difficult to declare who's the winner as of now, since the BARD AI model is going to switch to Palm 2, and we are expecting some updates to each one of these. With that, we can consider currently they are standing next to each other with similar capabilities and better enhancement in different fields. So with that having said, we can conclude this session on ChatGPT versus Bing versus BART. And if you would like me to answer the conclusion, I would say 
Well, it seems like we all have our strengths and weaknesses. At the end of the day, it comes to what users value the most. Do they want a visually appealing interface, strong privacy protections, or the ability to converse with an AI language model? It's up to them to decide. So you are the viewers and you can decide the winner of this particular battle on ChatGPT versus Bing versus Bard. And with that having said, if you are an aspiring artificial intelligence engineer looking for online training and certifications from the prestigious universities and in collaboration with leading experts so that you have the most robust foundations, skills, knowledge and what it takes to become the best, then search no more. Simply Learn's postgraduate program in artificial intelligence from Caltech University in collaboration with IBM should be your right choice. For more details, use the links in the description box below. If you are looking for ways to generate passive income without putting in too much effort thanks to the advancement in artificial intelligence and chatbots, it's now possible to earn money using these technologies. In this video, we will explore some of the effective ways to generate passive income with ChatGPT. ChatGPT is known for being the world's smartest generative AI and is changing the game when it comes to making money online. With this revolutionary free tool, you can earn with little skill and no capital required. There is an exciting new era of artificial intelligence and now is the perfect time to get involved and take advantage of this opportunity. People are using ChatGPT for YouTube, blogging, freelancing and for many other ways to make money. So let's dive in and discover how to make money using ChatGPT and generate various passive incomes. There are a variety of ways that you can make money using ChatGPT. We'll discuss few of them in this video. And we'll start with, first we'll see the list of all the ideas from which you can make money. The first is get business ideas from ChatGPT. Second is freelancing. Third is build a software. Fourth is boost your affiliate marketing with ChatGPT's email expertise. Fifth is leverage ChatGPT for blogging success. The next is unlock the potential of ChatGPT for affiliate marketing. And then we have utilized ChatGPT for ebook writing and self-publishing. This is the main thing what people are doing to make money using ChatGPT. And then we have utilized ChatGPT to enhance your YouTube channel. And then we have writing lyrics for music. So starting them one by one, we'll start with get business ideas from ChatGPT. By getting to know your interest, talent and obstacles. ChatGPT can generate tailored business concepts that align with your expectations. Let's dive right in and ask ChatGPT for some business ideas for a computer science engineer who has experience in digital marketing and sales. Ask ChatGPT and ask him that I am a computer science graduate or computer science engineer with experience in sales and marketing. What side hustle should I start generate around thousand dollars generate thousand dollars income that would be per day and that would be with minimum investment I want and it's not open here per day with minimum investment. And I can also tell him how many hours I can dedicate. So I can dedicate eight to ten hours. Okay, uh, yeah, eight to ten hours to this side as well. Press enter. So you could see that Chat GPT replies us that as a computer science engineer. With expense in sales and marketing, there's several side hustles to generate thousand dollars income per day. And he has stated the first one is e-commerce, then affiliate marketing, digital products. You can create and sell digital products such as ebooks, okay, freelancing, social media management, and YouTube channel. You can start your YouTube channel. So these are the ideas that you can get from ChatGPT. And but these ideas tailored to user skills and interests that I have put in. Now it's time to take these ideas and discuss them further with ChatGPT to conceptualize a plan. So consider important factors like alternatively you can begin by stating generate a new business idea for digital products. You can write that and he will guide you how you can start it or you could just write can you elaborate 
business idea of digital products i am going to start the side hustle with this and then you press enter and you can see that it has started the process for the business idea certainly starting a side hustle centered around digital products can be lucrative and fulfilling venture identify your expertise determine your areas of knowledge skill and passion and then he has stated choose your product format create valuable content set up an online platform market your products build an audience optimize for conversions provide excellent customer support so these are the paths he has stated and moreover you can elaborate those paths also you can just ask chat gpt so how can i identify my expertise and he will guide you with that so you can go deep down and explore any business idea so this was the first method through which you can generate income from chat gpt and moving on the next would be freelancing so take your freelancing game to the next level with chat gpt this state of the art ai tool is enabling professionals to earn extra income and produce top quality content that wows clients companies are even offering incentives for those who utilize this technology to create polished well researched work so here are some freelance services that you can offer using chat gpt starting with you can write blog or website content using chat gpt for others you can translate any language with chat gpt you can craft compelling headlines and calls to action with chat gpt and moreover you can do create social media content for posts or marketing for other people or any advertising agency you can write captivating short stories using chat gpt and you can conduct hashtag research using chat gpt that is you can find what is trending and offer your services to other people and gain money so these are the ways you which you could freelance and have some money in your pockets uh, you could just write a command that would be write a blog post and you could write on any topic that would be write a blog post on us economy so you could use this ai tool as your means like what the what your client required you can use for that and write the perfect without plagiarism content that would be blog post and you can translate any language with chat gpt you can write competitive headlines and calls and you can also write social media content that would be you can use seo research for that and you can write short stories also see that he has given you the blog post on the topic us economy the navigating uh, the title is navigating the current state of the us economy trends and insights and you can see that it has given you six points and if you want more you can just ask him to elaborate elaborate this and i want this blog post in 800 words so the thing you just have to do is write the script write the prompt you have to just prompt scripting and that do in the easy language that is in english and you will get all your answers from the chat gpt so now it will write the blog post that would be in 800 words so that's good and moving on what we'll do let's check out one of our learners what he has to say about our courses you need to keep updating your skills on a regular basis no matter what level you are at i recently completed the professional certificate program in ai and machine learning from simply learn in partnership with purdue university the course material was comprehensive and the faculty was extremely experienced uh, the faculty was able to adjust their teaching style in order to cater to the overall skill set of the class in the rapidly evolving world of technology it's important to keep up skilling for every working professional stay relevant continue learning now coming back so the third passive income you could make using chat gpt is building a software imagine this scenario you have an issue with your online business 
and you realize that many other people are facing the same problem. Well, here's where ChatGPT comes to the rescue. You can utilize ChatGPT to create software using the code provided by the AI. And then you can sell these software tools to make money. It's as simple as that. By leveraging ChatGPT's powerful capabilities, you can develop innovative solutions to common problems and turn them into valuable software tools. Whether it's automating a task, streamlining a process, or providing a unique service, the possibilities are endless. Once you have created your software tools, you can market them to your target audience, researching out to those who can benefit from your solution. And guess what? People are always looking for convenient and efficient software tools to enhance their business. So there's a ready market waiting for you. So selling software tools not only allows you to earn a steady income, but also empowers others to overcome challenges and improve their own ventures. It's a win-win situation. So if you are a problem solver and have a knack of for coding, why not use ChatGPT to create software tools that can make a real impact? Start by identifying common pain points that also you can ask from ChatGPT. You can just ask the ChatGPT, I want to create a software to help others during or in online processes, in online e-commerce. So he will give you suggestions and then you can proceed with those suggestions and create a software. And then you can sell it or you can use for your own use. So now embrace the power of ChatGPT. Tap into its coding expertise and unlock the potential to create and sell software tools. So your journey to financial success starts right here. And moving on, we'll move to the next income source that we can gain from ChatGPT. So you can boost your affiliate marketing with ChatGPT's email expertise. So do you know that ChatGPT possesses exceptional writing skills? It's true. This incredible chatbot can draft convincing emails that motivate users to take action, whether it's clicking on affiliate links making purchases or subscribing to services. ChatGPT has got you covered. That's impressive ability to generate engaging content. You can captivate your audience and compel them to take the desired actions. So we'll get back to the ChatGPT and ask him that I am an email marketer. And need to sell my CRM software. So write an email for me so I can attract customer and make them bite. Okay. Now you could see that it is writing email for you and you can launch your email affiliate marketing campaign also. Now that we understand the power of ChatGPT, let's discuss how you can kickstart your email affiliate marketing campaign. The first step is to choose an affiliate program that aligns with your niche, whether it's Amazon, Spotify, Shopify, ConvertKit or any other program. Make sure it suits your target audience. Next, it's time to build an email list of potential customers who are generally interested in your promoted products or services. You can use lead magnets or employ other effective methods to encourage email signups. You could see that he has written the email. That is, I hope this email finds you well as an email marketer. Okay, uh, this is for me. And you could start from here at your company. We have developed a powerful CRM solution tailored specifically for email marketers like yourself. Our software combines advanced features user friendly. Okay, he has written for uh, email marketers only he has targeted audience that is email marketer no issue you can ask him to change that and like you can craft compelling emails with chat GPT. and this is where chat GPT truly shines with its assistance you can create highly engaging emails that not only inform users about the benefits of the products but also inspire them to click on your affiliate links and make purchases imagine having a chatbot by your side imagine having a chatbot by your side helping you write captivating emails effortlessly by incorporating persuasive language, compelling storytelling, and personalized touch, your emails will stand out in crowded inboxes and generate higher click-through rates. So this is how ChatGPT can help you in email marketing. Now the next method is leverage ChatGPT for blogging success. In the realm of blogging, ChatGPT offers an array of advantages that can elevate your content creation journey. So the first is content generation. So unleash the power of this AI driven tool to spank your creativity and overcome writer's block. ChatGPT assists bloggers by generating ideas, crafting outlines 
anyone providing complete routes for blog posts. Say goodbye to our spend on research. With ChatGPT, you can access relevant information, statistics, and facts in mere seconds. Elevate your blogging game and unleash your potential with this invaluable source. And then you can edit and proofread using ChatGPT if you have written any content and get any content written. You could just write what we have already written that was write a blog post on US economy that we have seen in freelancing uh, side hustle. But here you can write and not only write but also if you have added some points with your research you can proofread and edit by using ChatGPT. That is for bloggers ChatGPT proves to be a valuable asset by offering assistance in editing, proofreading and enhancing the overall readability of your blog post. It provides suggestions and corrections for spelling, grammar and comprehension, reducing errors and ensuring clarity. Let ChatGPT define your writing and ensure your blog post shine with professionalism. The next what you can do for your blogging journey is keyword research and SEO optimization. So this is a fundamental aspect of successful blogging. ChatGPT becomes your trusted companion in optimizing your blog post for search engines. It suggests relevant keywords to include, guides you on structuring your content for maximum visibility and offers tips to enhance your online presence. Maximize your blog's reach and attract more organic traffic in ChatGPT's SEO expertise. And then we have audience engagement. And I will also show you how we can relate keywords. So for SEO, you could just search that would be give me related SEO keywords. SEO keywords for and the topic could be online shopping and press enter. So here are some related SEO keywords for online shopping. You could see all these. You could mention these on your backlinks if you have website or you could add into your blog posts, hashtags, which can gain you rank when searched. So moving back, the next was audience engagement. So engaging your audience is key to building a thriving blog. ChatGPT can assist you in connecting with your readers on a deeper level. It provides conversation starters, answer common questions, and addresses concerns from your audience. By leveraging ChatGPT's capabilities, you can foster meaningful interactions, cultivate a loyal following, and forge lasting connections with your readers. By harnessing the power of ChatGPT, bloggers can consistently produce high-quality content, captivate their target audience, bolster their online presence, and generate passive income. Embrace the potential of ChatGPT and embark on an exciting blogging journey that will leave a lasting impact. So moving on. We will now see another side hustle that is unlock the potential of chat jeopardy for affiliate marketing and you could do easily affiliate marketing if you have this blogging thing. So affiliate marketing opens up a world of earning possibilities and chat jeopardy can be your trusted ally on this rewarding journey. Users of chat jeopardy can leverage its capabilities to generate income through affiliate marketing. This powerful tool provides a seamless avenue for promoting goods services and brands all while earning a commission based on resulting sales embarking on an affiliate marketing venture requires thoughtful planning as a blogger or content creator you must carefully select the medium through which you will build your audience whether it's through captivating articles engaging audio content or compelling videos you have the freedom to choose the format that aligns with your strengths and resonates with your target audience when you have established your audience building medium chair jeopardy steps in to support your affiliate marketing efforts this AI-driven tool empowers you to craft persuasive content that effectively promotes the products or services you are affiliated with. By collaborating with ChatGPT, you can tap into its exceptional writing skills and create captivating promotional materials that resonate with your audience. As you implement your affiliate marketing strategy, ChatGPT becomes an invaluable resource. It helps you draft engaging articles, record compelling audio content, or script captivating videos that highlight the benefits and value of the products or services that you are promoting. So remember, affiliate marketing is a process that requires dedication and perseverance. Through consistent effort and the support of ChatGPT, you can unlock the potential of earning substantial income by promoting products and services that resonate with your audience. And this was for the affiliate marketing. And the next big thing is utilize ChatGPT for ebook writing and self-publishing. So are you a passionate writer seeking fresh and innovative ideas? 
look no further chat gpt revolutionizes your writing experience in a recent report that revealed that ai written ebooks have experienced a remarkable surge on amazon so you could just go on chat gpt and ask him i want to write a self help book at to plagiarism free yeah, i think yeah now the spelling is correct plagiarism free and it sh should have resonating chapters resonating chapters so Provide me with a list of chapters. As you can see, that it will define you, and you can also ask the title for the book, and it will give you the perfect title. And you can see the chapters that is introducing, setting the stage for personal growth, discovering your authentic self, cultivating a positive mindset. and after that you can ask chat gpt to elaborate these topics that would be in some words in some pages and you can use the same content to write a book and you can also ask the title from the chat gpt so with chat gpt as your creative companion the possibilities are boundless you don't need to possess the skills of literary genius to make an impact in the ebook market kindle direct publishing offer a seamless platform to showcase your book and make it easily accessible to enthusiastic readers by leveraging chatgpt to assist in writing your ebook you will save precious time and energy allowing you to concentrate on marketing and promoting your work effectively so this is how you can write ebooks and generate income using chatgpt moving on we have next passive income that is utilize chatgpt to enhance your youtube channel So ChatGPT is an invaluable tool that can assist you in generating captivating video ideas. You can ask him the video ideas also, and this is a creative block. ChatGPT can even go the extra mile by creating a script for your YouTube videos. So let's tap into the creative process, and we'll ask ChatGPT. I want to create a YouTube video. topic uh, gdp that is gross domestic product and i need your help writing the script for that so you could see that chat gpt has started its work So it's showing. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we'll be diving into the fascinating world of GDP. What exactly is GDP, and why is it such an important measure of a country's economy? So you can see that it has created the script for your YouTube video, and it is also telling you the scenes. So this is how you could leverage Chat GPT's capabilities, and that can give your YouTube channel a significant boost, helping you create engaging content and capture the attention of your audience. So start exploring the possibilities with Chat GPT today and witness your channel thrive. So moving on, the next we have is writing lyrics for music. So when it comes to music, the words we use in songs are super important. They have the power to make us feel all kinds of emotions and connect with people. And now there's a cool tool called Chat GPT that can help you write awesome song lyrics. With Chat GPT, you can take your ideas and turn them into beautiful words that touch people's heart. It's like having a virtual writing buddy that help you come up with catchy lines and cool rhymes. You can play around with different ways to express yourself and make your lyrics stand out. So you can Chat GPT to write lyrics for you. Here we wrap up AI ML Chat GPT course. If you like this video share it with your friends if you have any questions feel free to add it in the comment section below stay tuned with latest updates on technology by subscribing to simply learn channel thanks for watching staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career 
we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts, choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.